Hey guys, my name is Max. I am a ninth level rogue with D and D currently. Been playing for about three, four years, off and on for a little longer than that. But uh, I'm here with my buddies today, who I also play D and D with. This is Mike. How's your? And the DM of our group, Alex. So, wow, you forgot to say what race you were in the game, man. Yeah, for bolts, fuzzy little bastards. <laughs> fuzzy big bastards. Sound of it, but yeah. Also true. Anyways, yeah, Mike. I play a level uh, 7 monk, level uh, 3, or sorry, level 6 monk. It's level 6 monk. Yeah, level 6 monk. That's not 7, okay. And then level 3 bard. AKA level 9 total. So um, you play two different people? No, 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 no. He plays one guy that has two different classes at different levels. It's a way to show that you have experience in multiple fields as opposed to being focused in one thing like he currently is. That's why yes. I'm not doing this game, guys. <clears throat> and what are you? Uh, I'm the DM. I pretty much run the game, set up the sessions, come up with the storylines, throw every problem in the universe at these guys, and their job is just to keep the world from burning down too much while I have fun laughing in the background. As I start trying to figure out how to make napalm and blow things up, because, of, yeah. That actually did happen once. Alright, so you guys ready to do some Dungeons <coughs> & Dragons Ultimate Edition Trivial Pursuit. Alright. I'll right. be here in the background as the gelatinous cube, and basically, <coughs> the rule is if I get the question right, I just get to move along with you. Because I'm not going to get any of them right. <laughs> I you never know, man. There's a fair chance you might actually get something right. Well, let's begin. The way we're doing this today is, as we roll the dice, we move in any direction we choose. And if we run into the little pie-shaped wedges and get our question correctly, we get a hold of one of the little tabs that click into the base of our characters. As we go along, we need to collect all of them before removing back to the center. If you get the last question correctly, you win. So it's a race against everybody on who can collect all the wedges first and get their last question. By the way, small detail of the board that I as a DM just kind of like clocked, like literally right this second. This item and this item are actually from the Dungeon Master's Guide, and they're actually things I haven't given you guys yet in the campaign. I can't remember what they're called, but I do remember they're actually legendary tier items, which makes me wonder about like the rest of the stuff that's represented on here, how much of this is actually legendary stuff. Isn't this the binding ball that literally traps people when you say keywords? Oh, no, 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 that one has a red band on it. This one's something else. Ah. Well, we will find that out later and let you guys know if we have the extra men. <coughs> so I rolled a three, and I am rolling as the eight holder. So I'm going to move down into the third tier. Okay, so that's orange. monsters, and we're going to have my grab a card. Play it to the left of the player that moved, draws a card, and asks the question. Mm -hmm. And then they ask of the according color. Um, in this particular case, how many heads does an Eden have? Not, you know, I actually have not come across any of those. How's that spelled? Yeah, right? exactly. E-T-T-I-N. Etten. Etten. Apologies. I was about to say, if you go Lord of the Rings lore, Etten's are tree folk, which would be one head. And that's going to be my answer for that. And the answer is two. Each head has its own name and personality. Look at that smile on his face. He already knew that answer. Oh, yeah. And then actually, actually, yeah, they are a subclass of giant. They're actually considered two-headed hill folk nine times out of ten. That's right. Perfect. All right, well, you failed the question, so you stopped there. Now, if you would have got it right, you would have kept going for imperfect tool. But because uh, I'm going to have to put a handicap, just in case, no more than four questions correct at a time. That sounds fair. Why you got to handicap me like this? I have to. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, also, again, like this is just my DM brain kicking off. So each of these, each of these minis that we're using right now are actually different creatures. Just I'm going to list them off really quick. He's I list like, my own. I'm a gelatinous cube. Mm -hmm. He's a gelatinous cube, which mechanically they're not that strong, but they're incredibly dangerous because they're really hard to kill and they can dissolve almost anything that goes into them that's organic. In fact, with Slight the Spire, this guy has lots of health and you can only do one damage to it at a time. That actually is true. Nice. That actually is true for D&D. Uh, he is playing a Beholder. Their tentacles on top of their heads are actually eye stalks, and each eye is a different spell nine times out of ten. He's playing a Mimic, one of the most famous creatures from D&D, because they can be anything they want to be, literally. Table, chair, chest, you name it. If you've ever played Enter the Gungeon, there are a bunch of Mimic chests that they try and eat you if you don't get an item from them. Yep, and Mimic's actually originally from something outside of D&D that's like a fantasy book, I can't remember the title of it right now. I'm playing something called a Demi-Lich, which is basically a floating skull. It's like, a, it's like the Pokemon evolved form of an actual Lich, which is 
a super powerful magical undead wizard. These things are just a floating head of fire and death and like their teeth are made of gemstones and they are the fifth most powerful thing canonically to D&D as far as I know so far. You can find these in Ghouls and Goblins from the original Nintendo version and it's also in Binding of Isaac. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. I don't know what any of those are in D&D, &D, <coughs> but I've certainly got the characters down in some extent. There you go then. <laughs> Alright, so you're up, Mike. Alright. A two. Two for you. And I will go this way. Alright, so we have Dungeons and Adventures. How much does the Yawning Portal charge adventurers and tourists to ride the rope down the well into Underground? That's rather specific. Um, as, a, as a hint, it is going to be a currency. You know, I, 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 I was figuring that might be the case, but you know, there, there is the exception to that. Well, so somebody might say like a, a head or like it's a couple of fingers or whatever. It's an actual currency. There actually yeah, are yeah. some devils that do charge I'm that. I'm sure, that's, so. see, that's what I figured. So, so, the, the, so the tip is appreciated. Um, that is um, uh, 100 gold. The answer is one gold piece. The return trip also is one gold piece, just as an FYI. Yeah, I think it's from the Dungeon of the Mad Mage module, by the way. All right, so now we have our knowledgeable player, but will he get his question wrong after knowing the previous one? Wait, shouldn't it go to you? Oh, yeah. well, I guess. I, I'll play. So I'll roll. I'll embarrass myself. Okay, I'm four. Pink. Dungeons and Adventures category. <clears throat> the guiltiest tree grows in the twilight grove of what ruined subterranean forest? The dark forest from Harry Potter. <laughs> The Sunless Citadel, unfortunately, is the answer. <laughs> you were almost right. Sunless, dark, it's, it's, it's like the same thing. Uh, to be fair, though, I am as, I'm actually farther than the other two players. <laughs> so far. Okay, now it's my turn, I believe. Yes. <laughs> and I rolled a one, and I'm gonna go here to the green one. Can we just, like, say you always roll a one? You know, because just... <laughs> <laughs> Handicap me to the All right. The magic miscellany is the category. Magic and right. miscellany, yep. What material component is required to cast Continual Flame? Continual Flame is a spell that it creates a flame that can't be put out other than by this spell or by anti-magic zones. So what item has it? Oh, no, I'm trying to remember like the actual like reading of the book. Give me a second. That is... I believe it's a piece of flint or a piece of charcoal wrong. It is ruby dust. Casting the spell consumes the dust, which is worth 50 gold pieces. Oh! Ruby dust. That's more expensive. Yeah, right. same here. Max, you're but up. Yeah, it is a first level spell, so it wouldn't be a cantrip. Five. five. One, two, three, four, five. Roll, Roll again. again. A three. three. One, two, two, three. Roll wow. again. Wow! Three like bonus distance. Rolls. Five. One, two, Sadly, in this game, distance doesn't matter. It's all about hitting those pie face spaces. Yes. Oh. I was about to say, so, if we, as I understand it, if we get the pie piece and then we land on that pie piece again... It just counts as a regular space. So once you collect the piece, that's it. But you still have to answer a question of that color and then go at it again, right? Yes. Which I believe you got the engineering on this one. Uh, correct. Um... And the question is, what number on D6 do players need to roll in order to force open a door in first edition uh, AD&D? Oh no. <laughs> I never played first edition. The only edition I've played wait, wait, is... Wait, first edition AD&D or first edition D&D? First edition AD&D. So that's first edition Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, which is basically D&D 2.0 as far as most people are concerned. Which, actually I didn't even know players rolled in that one. I thought first and Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, the DM rolled everything. Uh, apparently no. They 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 apparently do have roles in that one. Huh. Well, there you go. I have a one in six shot of getting this one right, so I'm going to guess. Oh no, dude. Five. Roll. I was gonna say roll the d6 and whatever number that lands on. Maybe you're gonna get. You know what? I like that. <laughs> I like that idea. Four. When you don't know, you roll for it. Welcome to D and D. Um. <laughs> Back to the uh, And the answer actually was one or two. Oh, so wow. you actually had a two uh, one third chance. And I still got it wrong. But I left it to the roll of the dice. <laughs> that you did. Actually, even your original answer would have been wrong on top yeah. of that. Also true. All right, you're up. <clears throat> so, throw that in there. And... 
A five. Five. Oh, missed it by that much. Yup. Yeah. <laughs> I believe the cosmology. Oh, I gotta read it. Um, yeah, I do. All right. <clears throat> Cosmo. Oh, cosmology. At least a cosmetology. I actually did. <laughs> um, <laughs> forgotten realms. The symbols of the deities Timora and Joaquin are both what kind of objects? In the Forgotten Realms, the symbols of the deities Timora and Joaquin are both what kind of objects? You actually haven't run into these in my campaign yet, so... No, but I think I know it. I believe it's uh, gems? <sighs> Survey says... Coins. Timora's symbol is a silver coin bearing her face. Joaquin's is a gold coin bearing her face. So close. So close. <sighs> I think they're twin deities on top of that. Like they're supposed to be like a bounce to each other. AKA two sides of the same coin. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's still it, it's still possible for me to win if I just, you know, get some of these right. One, two, three, four, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, yellow. Okay. Just did that. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, the category is history. Oh my gosh. What was the nickname for the estate Gary Gygax bought in Clinton, Wisconsin in 1979? The name of the estate. The nickname of the estate. Okay, well, Gary Gygax, to my knowledge, is the original creator of Dungeons & Dragons. He's one of them, yes. And I believe he passed away recently? Uh, I don't know on that one. I actually haven't paid attention. Um, but the, the, the name of his, like, place he lived at? Yes. I'm going to say... Um, uh, he probably made a reference to something. Uh, the name of a play, I don't know, like, I guess maybe The Dungeon? Okay, I'm gonna guess Magnificent Mansion just because of Mordenheim. The Dungeon would be my guess. The Dragonlands. His horse stable would be called Dragonlands Arabians. Okay, I mean, I was on the right track. He named mm -hmm. something. You were definitely on the right track. I yeah. thought he was referencing something from the game when he did that. Likewise. I mean, would be, both are solid. Ideas on. All right, you're right. That one. You're right. right. Let's, let's see how many one of us can get six. a question right. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's Blue. a lot of questions here, actually. There's a ton of cards. Mm -hmm. Characters. Five each. Characters is the topic in Dragonlance. After uh, Rosalind passes his test, he was cursed to see the ravages of time on all things through eyes with pupils of what shape? Slits, dragon shaped. Hourglass. Ah. Huh. So close, <clears throat> but not close enough. The shape of the of the pupil. Oh, interesting. I was gonna have a reference for that, but I can't remember which show that is that the character had hourglass pupils. We don't talk about Bruno? Uh -huh. <laughs> three. One, two, three. Purple, Purple. it is. And cosmology it is. That's a one. All right. What is the native language of creatures that dwell in the elemental plane of Earth, such as Earth elementals? We actually just said this too in our game not too long ago. I mean, I, I'm gonna really kick myself. I get this wrong, but I'm gonna say for one, primordial. And what's the answer? Tarion. I, I don't need to read it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, it's, my friend. Okay, then he looks like Mike's well, up. The only correction I will say is Taryn rather than Tarion. Nah. That's it. Okay, so you go ahead and roll your die, and I'll give you your question. Yep, let's, let's see if I can land on something and answer. So four, so that's going to be a one, two, three, four, roll again. I can answer that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You need a two, a one. Uh, that's like a two. Magic and miscellaneous. <laughs> How many swords of answering are known to exist in the world of Greyhawk? Ooh. How many swords of answering, I'm guessing that's some type of thing, are known to exist in the world of Greyhawk? It's less than a million. <laughs> <laughs> Don't use that number as a reference. <sighs> So fun fact while he's trying to think, Greyhawk is actually the first setting where the famous Lich Vecna ever appeared in Dungeons & Dragons lore. Also in the, the show Stranger Things. Yes, they actually did reference that. Yeah. 
Each short sword has its own name, alignment, and a different kind of gem in its pummel. Mm -hmm. So that might help you, like, whittle down the number. <clears throat> For me, it would. So then I'm going to say... Nine? Nine is correct. Well, nine. nine is correct. Uh, good day, uh, sir. Good day. Thank you. Roll again. That's uh, there. We go. That's that's that 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 hint. Like basically, like there's like, two ways to have interpreted it, but otherwise, that that was enough to figure it out. I, I figured like you know it could be three, six, nine, or maybe twelve, well, right? So it wasn't gonna be like more than a hundred. Well, <laughs> no. As soon as you said they each had a different alignment, there's only nine alignments on the alignment chart for Dungeons and Dragons in general. Oh, bonus hit then. All, All right, right, go ahead. Six. Well, at least he'll get the distance. So um, the highest it could have been is nine, and yeah. probably nine is a good choice. And there's that question I can answer again. Okay. Um, Two. You're on blue. Okay, you need to answer this correctly, because this is going to get you one of the six pieces of power. Different campaign. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> this is for characters, and uh, I'm, I hope this character name sounds familiar to you. Org Nenshin is the master of which guild in the free city of Greyhawk? And I'll spell the name too. O-R-G, Org, Nenshin, N-E-N-S-H-E-N. Org Nenshin. Is the master of which guild in the free city of Greyhawk? He just said <clears throat> faster, that's all. It's fluid. No. Do you know who this guy is? Do you have any? No. No? Nor do I know the guild. No. <laughs> to be fair, I haven't used Greyhawk once in my campaign so far. So. But, but you know of the guilds. Can you name some guilds just <clears throat> off the top of your head? Not really. I mean, like, actually, this would like, be my I, I, guess. Can, I can take a generic guess of, like, the Adventurer's Guild. And that's about it. Okay, okay. So is that your answer? Yes, because that's all I got. But my answer would have been based on Aladdin for fun, and I would have been mostly correct. The Thieves Guild. The Thieves Guild. Yep. Yes. I also believe he's supposed to be one of the few full-blooded orcs in Greyhawk, if I'm correct, but I also could be wrong on that, because I haven't read that book in a very long time. All right. Um, You're up. Oh, I'm up. You're, You're up. up. Yep. Oh, man. I can go either way I want. Yep. I'm going to roll and see. Let me see. One, two, three, four. Oh, I'm this guy. No, I am this guy. Yeah, you have a cube. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, we're going to roll again. I'm going to try and get me a pink. Three, so. You can just go back to roll again. Yeah, actually. I'm going to try and... I'm going to try and... <laughs> you go back and roll again. <laughs> no, there's like a pattern here. Four. I... Go forward to roll again. <laughs> now, as far as I know, so I'm not cheating here. There's no... There is an infinite roll. Roll and die and move the number of spaces in the game. You can move in any direction. If you land on a roll again, roll and move again. So that is yep. correct. I can... I am going to try and... I think you found the professional... Play. I think you found the professional motion machine. Uh, so wow. five, so... Yeah, put me, put me, please, on monsters. Oh, this is a possible what I can answer. It's possible. Not likely. Which elemental plane is Geldur summoned from? That's not monsters. Actually, it is. The plane? I was hoping you'd tell me, like, about well, it's, not, it's talking about the home. Which of the elemental? Monster. How many planes are there? Can you tell me that? Uh, yes, there are. Depending on which tradition we're talking about, I'm assuming in general D&D, there's four elemental planes. Think Avatar, Earth, Fire, Wind, Water. Those are the four main ones. Yeah. Okay, and give me the name again. Uh, Galeb Dur. <laughs> and the us. So making sure there wasn't like rock and stone or like some, some other <laughs> elemental planes that would not be Actually, aware. there is a naming convention to the planar creatures, but I can't explain what that is right now. I'm going to go, that name sounds like Earth to me, so that's my answer. Earth, the Gleb Dur is an elemental creature resembling a boulder, but more intelligent than an earth elemental. That is, um, well, well right done. Then. Well Thank done. You. First, <laughs> so, first piece. So for the earth elemental, the naming conventions, like usually from the earth plane, is they have more like solid, funky names. Yeah, that's kind of what I was going for, thinking about, well, it's, first of all, it's like, it's a Greek slash Latin type of a root name, and I feel like that's probably what they would use for like earth sounding names. Okay. Yeah, I, I'll get to roll. I won. I won. I, 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 I succeed. We're just stopping at four when it comes down to. Um, yeah. Just go ahead and put me on the purple to your right. Or your left, your left, your left. That one. That's it. Okay. Yeah. All right. I feel less cosmology. 
In the Forgotten Realms, the deities Meiliki and Lure share what image as their symbols? Meiliki. Mm. Okay. <sighs> what shape as their symbols? Share what image what as their image. symbols? Okay. A snake. That'd be my guess. <laughs> a unicorn's head. Meliki's unicorn has a golden horn, and Luray's unicorn has a silver and framed by the moon. Okay, well, I, I guess correctly as far as it was an animal of some, some type. Yep, yep. Yeah, this is true. I'll give you partial credit. <laughs> yes, <laughs> half points, I'll take it. All right, uh, I believe you're up now. All right, let's go. Three. Three. Boon me over to monsters. You could also roll again. Nah. All right, <laughs> I just want to answer the questions. I'm gonna get at least one right. I have tried as a DM to defend here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, name one of the three methods that can permanently destroy a flame skull. A flame skull. Let's see. This feels like a question you might be able to answer. Bludgeoning, drowning, and freezing. I believe. Well, you only need to say one. No. Well, either one of those three. Uh, what, but one of them might not be right. So you gotta pick one that's your, your favorite. I'm gonna go with bludgeoning. Incorrect. Splash with holy water, cast a spell magic, or cast remove curse. Ah, so none of those. Well, the is in spla uh, splash with holy water, and that be cl pretty close. To drowning, to if drowning. I pick that. Yeah, yeah. I'd yeah. argue it at that point, but I didn't, so I'm not going to. I was about to say, I think the, the main bit on that is getting rid of the undead or, or magic. The curse on it, yeah. Yeah. All right, you're up, Max. Four. Four. One, two, three. There you go. Game the system. <laughs> One. No more gaming the system. <laughs> I'll go with blue. It's a good choice. There Characters. Alright. In Dragon <coughs> Lance. In Dragon Lance. <laughs> what he said. Um, what is the surname of Tika before she married Carmen Majir? Yeah, I don't know this one. Tika? Tika Masala? You know, just for fun, I'm going Tika Masala. Yeah. It's tasty. And it is Wayland. <laughs> when you're talking a name like that, and I've never come i I've never actually read through any of the Dragonland stuff, that is literally like an impossible thing. But you know what? There are a lot more questions and answers that are from older editions and from stuff that I'm not used to that I was ex than expected. So this is actually a lot of fun. <laughs> It is a it's little bit of a very trip educational. Back. Yeah. All right, I'm ready to give you a, a, a question, and I'll use my oh. strong announcer voice. I'm ready to give you an answer that is not so strong, and you will likely have some amount of self doubt there. Roll again. That's a good space to be in. Let's roll a record. One, two, one, two. Roll this way. Roll again. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> I remember this pattern. Cowards, a lot of you. <laughs> Oh, and there we go. Um, you just pull a max there. So I ain't gonna choose one. <laughs> All right. You don't, I don't think anybody's gotten the yellow one yet there. I did. Yeah. Mm. That's well, okay. actually, he got it earlier. History. <laughs> History. What was the first D&D &D campaign setting product published by TSR? The first D&D &D campaign setting product published by TSR. Oh, boy. Man, um, this has actually come up a lot, by the way, uh, in, in, our, in, in this game. The specific word. Yeah. Dragonlands? Greyhawk. The world of Greyhawk in 1980. I don't. I'm gonna learn a lot about Greyhawk in this game. I think. Yeah. No. Again, like Greyhawk is the first or second most famous setting in D and D. Follow uh, currently jockeying with Eberron, depending on who you ask. All right. I'm ready. I'm ready and willing. I need to get. I need to get One. to pink. I think. Yeah. Also, by the way, you guys know how Six. I said like more kinds, magnificent mansion, stuff like that in the campaigns. One, yeah. Those are actually wizards from Greyhawk. So I'm gonna go with ooh. I think it's a five. Dun Dungeons and Adventures. Go ahead and move me all the way to your right. There we go. Pink, please. Oh, you guys are done He's for. Getting in the zone. <laughs> you guys are done for. I mean, you are in the lead still at this point. <laughs> Module, modules such as the 2013 Murder in Boulder's Gate were playable with any version of D&D from 3rd edition to 5th edition, true or false? 
Do I have to roll a d20? I do have one. Go, go ahead and give me the, the, the statement again. Modules such as the 2013 Murder in Boulder's Gate were playable with any version of D&D from 3rd edition to 5th edition, true or false. That's a 50-50. Not necessarily. It's just true or false. Well, it is a 50-50 if I don't know the answer. Right. But do you know the answer? Well, the question is, is this after or... Uh, is, this is an after, this is a, something that's, that's come after, right? After 3rd and 5th. Yeah. Is it? Uh, so, it, and then it's like, is this, does D&D specifically try and let you use the previous stuff? And, and I guess the answer is like, not all of it, but, but some of it, right? Or most of it. I'm just going to go with true. I think the answer is false. But it's true! Yeah. And just based on common logic is how I would guess that. So mm -hmm. I will take an extra turn. Roll again. A one, which will let me roll, roll again. again. Yep. A two. Yep. You take me the yellow, good sirs. Secretly, I am a D and D master. I mean, to be fair, he's actually the first ahead of us. <laughs> I've never really. actually played a full campaign. We did a one shot once five years ago, but uh, that sounds well, well experienced. <laughs> what was the name of the cartoon wizard who served as TSR's brand ambassador in the early 1980s? Merlin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's Marley, which is close to Merlin, <laughs> but unfortunately not. Okay. Marley. I, I was like, it's either going to be a popular wizard or it's going to be something I've never heard of. So it's I'm Marley, gonna... Merlin's cousin. Yeah. Um, that actually might be canon as far as I know. I don't know. Ma Marley is like the, uh, is like the, 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 <laughs> the, the unwanted uh, <laughs> extra son, right? <laughs> yeah, so we called for a wizard. Um, Merlin was busy. Except so... Marley. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. You're, 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 you're up, Alex. Alex. Now. Five. Oh, I actually got on yellow, too. I almost could have got it. Heart broken. One go. One, two, three, four, five. To hold again. Yeah, welcome to the team now. <laughs> Uh-oh. Dungeons and Adventures. All right. Question is, what, ex uh, what inexpensive preserved food do old school adventurers carry with them when they go into a dungeon? I know this because I asked Max this question when I first got in the game. Okay, so I'm going to say provisions, but my brain's saying jerky, even though I'm going to say provisions. Iron rations. Iron rations? Yeah. But I've never heard of those. For it. But, I mean, they're essentially rations in general. The preserved food is, is rations. Did you say rations? No, I said provisions. Oh, oh provisions. Yeah. No, no dice. No, man. it's not close enough. Uh, I've been wrong, but at least I'm honest. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I thought that was very strange. Iron rations. So. I've never heard that term until now. Uh, to be yeah. honest, and we can just discard the cards off the game. That'd be easier to. Five, probably. One, One two, three, four, five. Purple, it is, and that is cosmology. Corellian Larithane. Corellian Lotharian. Sorry. Rilithane, Rilithil, and Deep Seychelles are all gods of which humanoids? If you want to correct me on any of those, go straight on ahead. I have no problem with you correcting me on these things. Can I? Can I uh, yeah, sure, 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 sure. All right. Corellian Lotharian, Raphaelian Rathili, and Deep Seychelles are all gods of which humanoid creatures? Sorry, I, I specifically love this god in particular, Corellian, just because I had a whole thing with him in the previous campaign. That they played? No, that I was a, I'm the, I'm the, that was a player in. I was actually a knight who was a worshiper of him, even though I wasn't a cleric. Like, I still relied on religion. So do you actually play. know this answer? Yes, I do. I 100% do, but I can't say it. Answer as a humanoid race? Yes. Humanoids are anything that have a body, two, two arms, right. and two legs. I mean, I have an idea of uh, the guest, but... I'm gonna go with dwarves. Elves. Mm, that was my first thought, too. <laughs> yeah. They are the elven gods of art and magic, dwarves. nature, and the sea, respectively. 
I, I thought, I was thinking the sea, and I was thinking merfolk, actually. No, that merfolk was, actually aren't humanoids. It sounded like, one of the names sounded like like the sea type of a name, though. Corellian Letharian, I'm guessing? Yeah. Yeah. So merfolk are uh, humanoid, though? They actually don't count as humanoid, because uh, their bottom half is actually fish, not legs, nine times out of ten. So they yeah, don't count so as humanoid. You have to have two legs and two arms to be considered humanoid. Right. All right, you're up. Yeah, but you can just throw those cards off to the side from now on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Easy peasy. Let's see where Sam is going to go. Uh, Perfect. That's going to take you to cosmology. <clears throat> Are you ready? No. <laughs> Most humanoid civilizations, dwarf, elf, human, halfling, etc., Inhabit which plane of existence? You know this one. You better know this one. I know this one. You literally just dealt this with this. This is the only one I know. Day. The prime? Sometimes called the prime material plane, the material plane. Yes. I will give it I will give it to you. I didn't know the prime, I just knew it was material. Because so I thought it was like, I'm like, oh, like like earth place, and then that's like it's material. I'm like, oh, same thing. Yeah, no, and so it's like in my head. Yeah, no. So the prime material plane is actually made of the four primordial planes with our earth, wind, fire, and water. So right. there you go. Okay. Well, well you succeeded, I'll... you may continue your journey. I I I will take my 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 uh your win. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Um Maybe the clue helped is it's the only one I know. <laughs> I don't know if that helps. Uh, let's see, so five. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go this way and yeah. just going to land in a roll again. That's saying either way. Yeah. Um, a one. You can either join the head or you get to move back to Brute. Uh, uh, um, you know, with uh, Dungeons are characters, ahead. man. Yep, okay. yep. Right. Dungeons it is. What do you call the vertical floors of a dungeon? The vertical floors of a dungeon. You're in a dungeon and there's no levels? Yes. Yes, you do. (laughs) (laughs) And the dungeon also has levels, by the way. I was wondering if this was a trick question on that one, to be quite frank. (laughs) They got to throw easy questions once in a while, otherwise the game would go nowhere. (laughs) I'm fine with taking them there, too. (laughs) Um, Okay. I see, I already got the purple one. You can go right back to. Oh, that's true. You can. Oh, you're off by one. Oh, no, no, no. So the nice part here is one, two, three, four, five. Yes, you can. Next. Alright, get yourself yourself a two. Two, four, or three. So you can go back now if you want to roll again. <laughs> no, no. So now you need a five. Three or three, five. That's it. Be a five. yellow. I'm going to take care of you. Here you go. Ready for an easy one? Yeah, yes. Yes, I always. <laughs> History. Who created the Forgotten Realms? Who created the Forgotten Realms? I know this. I know this. Oh. Are they talking in the actual lore of the game or like in the real world who wrote the setting? Uh, no. Um, no. Mm, the name is uh, very, very humanoid. I can say that. Okay, so it's probably like in the real world who wrote the setting then. So, so who's the author of the Forgotten Realms? Uh, it sounds like a person that exists here. Oh, know, that's fair. But it's just like, yeah. it's that thing of like, okay, which way do they mean? There's like two different ways to take that. I was about to say, if it's the game one, I don't know that one. Well, I mean, if it's, the it's real not really one. very clear, to be fair. But that's I'm, true. But I'm going to say that it's the author. You, this is the one you either know or you don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't know it. I don't know. Like I, I know I've read it before plenty of times, and I don't know it. All right. His name is Ed with an E and one D, and then Greenwood. Ed. Greenwood. Yeah. 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 I recognize it's the like name. Like pretty much a, the most standardized name possible. Yep. Greenwood and Ed. Elderlich. Now you yep. have to remember yep. it for all eternity. <laughs> Ed Greenwood. <laughs> all right. I mean. Let me show you how this is done. Oh. I mean, you're very, you are on the board. One. Oh, that's not helpful to me, is it? <laughs> that's Look. how it's done. Um, go ahead and take me to the center. right. Let's go to the right. The center. <laughs> All right. Give me a blue one. Characters. I'll just go ahead and finish this one off real quick so I can go back to the one. <laughs> Which is the correct term for the citizens of Baldur's Gate? A boulderian or a Baldarian?
Man, huh. you know what's funny is I actually played a game similar to Diablo called Boulder's Gate. This, that actually is set in the D&D &D world. And it is set in the D&D &D world. Um, I played this when I was in high school, though. They actually have a new version of it on the computer right they now. They do, uh, yeah. I, didn't, I haven't tried it out yet. And I, I also have, in, in, in the board game world, there is a battle, there's a Boulder's Gate um, house, the, the haunted, the, it's like a murder game. Yep. The Trail of the House on the Hill, Boulder's Gate. Yep, Baldarian or or Baldurs? Is that my options for the the citizens? Baldurin or Baldarian? Baldurin or Baldarian? I think Baldarian is the trick one because that's one normal people would pick, and I think it's the other one. That's my guess. The other one, not Baldarian. So Baldurin. Baldurin. Well, either way, the correct answer is lying bastards based on their history, but Baldarian. Baldurin is the name of the citizen's founder. It, to misuse his name insults his memory. Okay, okay, because Baldarian sounded like the right answer, but I thought this might have been a trick question. I get you. All right, well, oh well, I gave it a good shot. I like the 50-50s. I have a chance. A green. You have a chance. Magic and miscellany. Can I get on the board? <laughs> no. Just, yeah. just, 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 uh, just, just me and Mike. Mike's the only ones. I'm pretty sure you can get on the board with this one. Which class can cast the spell, create food and water? Clerics. Cleric, druid, or ranger? Cleric. <laughs> Cleric is the right choice. <laughs> and you need to hear the rest of it. Just, which class cast got it? <laughs> I can do this. Give me a green piece, please. Welcome to the board. Yay, finally. I'm and not a total nice. failure as a DM. And roll again. Two. Roll again. Six. Six. So one, two, three. I think I show shoot. Four, five. Yeah, put you on blue one, or two, yellow. Three, four, five, six. Six. I'm gonna go with History the blue for characters. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Which beautiful drow priestess rules house Elsevers in Vault of the Drow? God, I was killed by this bitch one time. What's her name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, remember, remember your vengeance. Remember your vengeance. Which beautiful drow priestess, right? Yes. It was something Shadow Silk. I can't remember her first name. It's, I'll take something Shadow Silk. If e that's correct. Honestly. Yeah. Eclavrida? E C L A V D R A. Oh, it's the last Eclavrida. name. Or is there no last name? No, that's it. Alright, no <laughs> dice then. You know what? My DM might have made up the last name for her just because he likes having first name, last name for all his NPCs. So that might not Ball be a good Yeah, exactly. So. So that probably was her that I got killed by, but it might have been like something he made up for the spot of the name. A Cloudra. Cloudra? A Cloudra. Three. E Cloudra. That's what it was. One, two, three to roll again. The drow the so language like... is spoken more nasally than it is vocally. I don't know. Or to Klingon roll is also foreign to me. <laughs> to a friend who does that. Give me an orange. Got another piece going out here. Yes. All right. So, we'll see. What is the name for the intelligent, ambulatory fungi that live in the Underdark? Read the question again? What is the name for the intelligent, ambulatory fungi that live in the Underdark? As in fungus fungi. Not a fungi like me. <laughs> oh, wow. I'll be honest, I don't know what ambulatory means. Um, it means that they can move around on their own. Oh, like, 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 like sapperlings and spores and, well, I'm not going to give you more hints, but those type of things. Right? Sure. Sapperlings are like those like, things that move around. Lock and plant. Um, I have an idea, but I want to wait until he gives his answer before I give like what I think the answer is. Honestly, the few times that we've gone down in the Underdark for campaigns, these have never come up. Oh, dude, straight up, 90% of the stuff that I throw in the Underdark at you guys is actually homebrew. Well, that doesn't help matters. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <sighs> Honestly, the only thing that's closer to, like, fungus-looking stuff that we have dealt with, which are in the books, but you do know, but I know they're not what we're going for, but I'm going to say flumps. I think they're flumps, in honesty. I could be totally wrong. Okay, okay, before I give the answer, I am going to drop a hint. The name is actually pretty prevalent in a lot of other games. Mushroom? 
what is it? Yeah, yeah, just the, the answer. Do you have another guess? Or? I'm, no, I'm going to keep with form. Okay, so the answer is mycoids. Mycoids. I've never heard that term until now. Mycoids slap or like magic. Mm -hmm. At least if I the exact same. Right? Yeah, it is. It is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's oh, a magic wow. monster as well. I need more flubs in my campaign. Yes, <laughs> flubs are fun. All right, so I believe that I'm going to give you another win, right? I'm here uh, to help. Uh, that, that, that is exactly right. Can I just, like, roll a zero? No. No? No? I, no. <laughs> I think another rule could be we could, like, because this will really take quite a while. After after this round, um, so after mm -hmm. this person, this person move off, if you lay on these bases, you'll just stay there until you get it right. So we don't have to, otherwise, this is, we're, we're looking at, yeah, this is going to take us like three hours. That's about to <laughs> No say. problem. So we'll speed it along. So yeah, the new rule, because we're just homebrewing it here ourselves, is if you land on it, you can stay until you win. But you can't leave until you do. All right. I'm down. All right, so you're on, what you, what you, what you got to do? Five, so one, two, five. Right. So let's go right off of that. And then four. Let's, uh, let's go right on for that. Um, All right. You know, I just want to get some distance there. You know, just want to travel a little. And um, you gonna travel backwards now? Well, yeah. Why? Well, yes. Yes. Revisiting the areas. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm enjoying the scenery. You drop something on your way. Six. All right. Um, that is. Uh, I think you're goofed now. You don't get the. You get to go to the cube yeah. or away. So. Uh, Let's see. So I already have that one. So let's go this way. Though. That's going to be. You're going to join, join the cube. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yes, I am. Okay. So we're looking at characters. In Faroon, I believe that's how you pronounce this. Faroon. Faroon. Okay. Uh, in Faroon, what color and type of weapon was preferred by the wizard Kelbin Aronson? Aronson. That is so how it's pronounced. It's... And lent him his nickname. What weapon was preferred by the wizard Kelvin Aronson and lent him his nickname? So, what weapon and what color? Yeah, what color and type of weapon? Um, um, this is actually pretty. I mean, it's, it's, this is a wizard. Yeah, it, it, yeah come on now. There's, if you don't know, wizards typically use and then colors that you have options. But I, um, I mean, I can tell you that his nickname was is also the answer. Um, it became the title for the Archmage of Waterdeep as well. So those yeah. are some extra oh, bonuses. No, I, yeah, no, I, I should know it at this point there. Lordy. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to help it out. I'm trying to help brother out. Oh, right. yeah, no, 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 no. At that point, you're just short of giving it. Actually, right? they haven't run into Waterdeep in my campaign yet, so it's not helpful. Yes, there job. is a Lords of Waterdeep board game, and... Uh, Actually, an idea I had for that was we would play the board game at least one week, and that would actually form Waterdeep in the campaign you guys eventually run into, just so you can see the consequences of your own actions. Huh. All right, give me a give me a color and a weapon. I mean, I, there's just you look around the room. Staff. Okay, um, that's that's your answer, and, and, now I, and now I want a color. A wizard. So you got a couple colors to choose from. Go with your gut. First color that comes to mind. Honestly, yellow. All right, a yellow staff. Yeah, but I don't think that's right. So, um, is, is that your final answer? Yeah, or? yeah, yes. It, All right. So the weapon is a staff. Nice. And the color is black. <laughs> <laughs> a black. I'm like, if you go with black or blue, you're probably on the right track. And a staff or a wand is probably good options. All right, uh, it's my turn. Let me show you guys how it's done. A five. <laughs> Which way would you like to go? Um, well, one, two, three, four, five? Yeah. No, oh, I thought it was one, six two, spaces three, four, between five. each. No, so there's so, six, six spaces in the middle of No, each. you're not wrong. There's six in between. I, I, okay, let's go this way. I think they did that on purpose, by the way, so you can't literally go from spot to five. spot directly. Magic and miscellaneous. Yeah. I'm going to have to chew by accident. How long can you maintain control over a ghoul that you have raised with a create undead spell? How long? Oh. How long? Is... Let me, let me think. Let me think here. Is it in time or turns? Uh, I'm going to say time. time right? Okay. It's yeah, in it's time. in time. It's in time. Which, if you knew the create undead I, spell, you'd actually know the answer. Can I answer, like, a long time? 
No. 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 Like, I have to answer the exact correct number. Yes. But the, is oh, it, hold on, hold on. I'll give you a hint. It's a standard unit, unit of measurement in our world. Yeah. They're, mm. Almost all spells are generally standard increments of time. Minute, ten minutes, hour, uh, okay. until... It's short of, like, until long rest or something like that. Uh, there are some that say this goes for a year and one day specifically. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's like, I know that there's some that are, like, in perpetuum as well. Like, this is a forever thing. Until it like, gets dispelled. Yeah. yeah. There are some that do that. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a hint. This one is definitely less than a year and one day. Okay. Which, by the way, okay. fun fact. Um, if a bard casts a full, uh, mass control at, like, ninth level, you can actually make an entire audience do the cha-cha slide for a year and one day against their will. Oh. That actually is a thing in D&D. Death um, by Cha Cha Slide. If it's a unit of measure, I don't know. It's going to probably be either days or hours. If I don't know the exact number, it's kind of just shooting in the dark. So I'll just say like, I don't know, six hours. And the answer is 24 hours. The spell must be recast every 24 hours in order to maintain control of it. Okay. Which so if I had gotten that one, I would have known because that's actually one of my least favorite spells to use against you guys. Well, I guess I was sort of on the right track. I did say hours. It worked. But it is it one, one day, technically, as well. So. Yeah, I would have right. accepted either one at that point. Same thing. Yeah. Yep. Six. Yes. Which I believe it'll put you on orange. No, no. Moving to orange. All right. All right. So are we moving to the rule there of... Oh, good, it's monsters. I might actually know this one. Once you're on it, you're on it now. Which <clears> type <throat> of... Mephlin, a small elemental, is comprised of both air and fire. Which type of small elemental is comprised of both air and fire? Which type of Mephlin, a small elemental, is composed of both air and fire? I mean, if you know enough there, Mephlin's probably going to be the one that's going to give that away, but that's if you specifically know Mephlin's. Yeah, here's the thing, I don't like them. Yeah. I recognize the name from the books, but I haven't like, researched them heavily. Um, would you like a hint? Yes. What would air and fire mix together to create? A flaming tornado, as far as I know. Uh, air and fire. I mean, fire needs air to even be fire, so... Okay. If I, if I say more than that, it would, it would be very easy to give it away. I, I, I think I could take a few stabs at that, but yeah, that's, 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 yeah. Uh, fuck it, fireball. A smoke Memphis. A smoke Memphis. Okay. All right. But you stay there, though. Yeah. So you know you stay there, which is nice. All right. Mike's going to ask you a question, and you're going to get it wrong, and it's my, my turn to read question. <laughs> I will just go to this next one, too. <coughs> Four. Give me a yellow. There we are. All right. What is the name of the fantasy settings in which Dave Arneson ran the first dungeon adventures? I, I, I choose Greyhawk. <laughs> Honestly, that would be a safe bet. Uh, I'm going to go with Greyhawk, but I know that's probably wrong. Uh, Blackmore. <laughs> which is a name I recognize. I'm sorry, it's only 90% of the yeah. answers. I, I've heard of it before, but yeah. Blackmore actually predates Greyhawk. Wow. All right, you're you're up, Mike. Go ahead. All right, all right. So, so, Blackmore is like super esoteric. Like virtually nobody in the fan actually remembers that place even exists. Six. Since I got that, yeah. Well, strength for the green. What class does not have access to the spell contact other plane? Contact other plane. That's the spell. Sorcerer, warlock, or wizard. Which one doesn't have access to the spell contact other plane? Sorcerer, Warlock, or Wizard? Sorcerer. The answer is... Sorcerer. <laughs> that one I had to do a little math Take on. Take yourself a piece of power. So, so so, that one I had to do a little math on, on the fact of a Warlock is... To, it does packs, so they probably have other playing things as part of their packs half the time. Yep. So, no. Wizard can learn other classes' spells. Not all the that. time, but a lot of times. So, the only one that made sense was a sorcerer who's like the one that tries to do everything innately. Process of elimination. Alright, Mike. Well, we got again. Oh, right, right. And that's a thing. Oh. Mike is ahead of us right now with two. Five. Let's go this way. Can we go to the roll again? Okay, either way is roll again. Yeah. Alright, go ahead and roll again. If you notice the patterns re repeat themselves around it. Yep. Four. 
Let's spells roll again. You know, they're just nice. Let's get two. There okay. We go. Since you asked, Dia, Dia Holly dice rolls. He does this during our games all the time. What so kind game. of creature slew Homer Simpson's character when he played D and D with his new college friends in a 1993 episode? Oh Lordy. <laughs> This is not one I know. I haven't watched Simpson in forever. I know this answer. <laughs> oh my god. It's going to be something ridiculous, isn't it? You, Depending it's, on it's, your standards. It's Homer Simpson, okay? So exactly. you have to imagine this is a modern show made for people who want, they don't want to know. It's not going to be like a Michael or something like that. It's going to be something that people are aware of. So I'm going to throw a generic one of... There's... Like, Beholder, Mimic, Slime, those are, like, very generic ones that a lot of people know. I would say um, that, uh, to answer, the, to, to give this as a, to be, to be fair with this question, uh, creature might not be the best terminology. So, what type of being, or what what killed? Homer Simpson in the game. Yeah. I know this by pure watching the show, but it's not really a creature. I don't think people would deter, you guys would not say that as a creature. I was about to say golem, but that's too advanced. Um, uh, 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 what the heck? Let's go with golem. Golem, okay. It is an elf in the episode of Homer Goes to College. Uh, so I don't know if you call an elf a creature. It's actually, a humanoid, right? So, actually, the full description is a humanoid creature, so okay. mechanically the word creature is still used in d I wasn't creature. certain how it would work, but I knew it was a humanoid, so I'm like, yeah. humanoid, is that a creature? Because... I, when you know, most people there <clears throat> think the term creature that they think of different enemy yeah. types, as it were. So I don't but, want to throw you off like it's an ooze or like a beholder or something. The no. one, the one rule for D and D that stayed across all versions of it is a creature is anything that's organic. Right. It doesn't matter how it exists, as long as it exists and it's organic, it's automatically a creature. So a human it, could be just a creature then. A no. human is a humanoid creature. Yes. Okay. Okay. Then, uh, yeah. Then I'm right. I'm going to say I, I I personally tried dumbing that down too much on my own side there. I was thinking Homer Simpson though, so what's the klutziest way? Let's go with five. And I am the, the gelatinous cube. Is there a roll again? There is. Yes. Yeah, send me to the roll again. And any, any anything but the space I'm near. A four. That's going to take me close to. Uh, put you uh, here. Yeah. On go back. Go back. Go back. Let's try and see if I can double roll again and get get to, get to six. One, two, four, four. Two, four, let's go this way. Yeah. One, two, three, yeah, three four, three. five. It's gonna say right next to it. What color is that? Yellow. Right. History. Wow, that one was also history. Homer Who Simpson. took over control of TSR from Gary Gygax in 1985? Oh. The only name I know in the entire lore of D&D is Gary Gygax. So the answer is J.R. Tolkien. <laughs> Lorraine Williams. All right. Well done, Lorraine. Good job. <laughs> it's controversial know. opinion. Some people actually think that was the start of the downfall of D&D when she took over. Oh, really? Yeah. She didn't actually care about the storyline. She just was trying to make money. Marketer, you know, yeah. just yeah, business. Okay. Anyway, so, so move me. You are on the oh, yeah. space, okay. so you yeah, can don't stay there. Can move. So it's monsters again. Let's go. Yes. What is... Distinctive about the hands of a rakasha in its true form. Is oh, it, is a rakasha? Oh, I'm not gonna say anything. First. Rakasha are tiger demons, so they have like claws with like with like with like orange fur and stuff on it. They're clawed hands. They are backwards. A rakasha's palms right, are the... where the backs of the hands would be on a human. <sighs> See, that, that's to be... a nuanced detail. That's not, that's not even Here's like the thing. There are tiger demons that specialize in brain screwing people, so yeah. it's that whole thing of like. Uh... Rakashas are very interesting enemies to fight. But they're, they're like they're like furry monsters, right? Close. They're actually devils. Yeah. But they have fur, don't they? They have fur. Okay. They look like tigers to, the, to like normal people. Five. Five. That puts me on a roll again. Nope. Alright. So we got two monsters wrong in a row. Four. I'm disappointed myself. I need to go back and read the books. Oh. That guy's bad news. I'm gonna go back and actually read all the monster books now. That is gonna give us more options and also a lot more chaos. One, two, three, four, four. Yeah, yay. 
Pinker Green. Obviously. Dungeons and Adventures. We already are. Alright. Okay. Um, module B1, In Search of the Unknown, requires the dungeon masters to fill in monsters and treasures for each room. True or false? True. True. Yeah, that would be my guess. As well. um, I played a few um, like roll and write D and D campaigns. Like you have to just you, you it's just one player, and those it's like this is based on the original, and you have to fill in everything. Give me blue characters. I'm gonna be stuck here forever. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, I get a rental spot there. Mm -hmm. uh, pull out the lawn chair. Storm, Silverhand, and the Seven Sisters were the daughters and chosen of which Forgotten Realm's deity? You know any Forgotten Realm deities? I haven't used canonical deities. Well, then you're days. gonna have to just take a wild guess. <laughs> I know the Greek or Roman guy. Okay, now hold on, hold on. To make it slightly no, easier, if you can at least know what they were, what they were the deity of, All right. I take that as an answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I totally read the question again then. Storm Silverhand and the Seven Sisters were the daughters and chosen of which Forgotten Realm's deity? You're looking like you don't know. I'm gonna shoot. You gotta shoot for an answer in the dark. Then throw one out. The deity of luck. All right. Well, I'm gonna wait for him to finish searching over there. I'm pulling it up right because now. it does not tell me. What? Oh, this the, may... It tells me the name of the god, not what they are a god of. Oh, the well. name of the god is Mistra. Mistra. She's the goddess of magic, I know that much. Oh. And her father was not luck, unfortunately. Okay. He was the god of troubadours and songs. Dang. So. I was so, hoping... So magic and minstrels. Yeah. Actually could be a good D&D &D parody. Alright, okay. you're up. <laughs> the magic of You music. actually are currently already um, in space, right? This is oh you're the yeah you're yeah the, I'm, for you. I'm, I'm there that's my rental history. spot history <laughs> history when Wizards of the Coast stopped publishing Dungeon or sorry Dragon magazine in 2004 which mm -hmm. was sad because that's when a lot of the stores closed down as well that's when yeah. the one in the mall closed down when I was frequently I was so yeah. sad right. who ended up licensing and printing it so Wizards of the Coast which got shut down and that's that was like. The Wizards opinion, of the Coast is still around. They're actually the current owners. They are, but the, they, they stopped all their retail locations. That's yeah. right. So that this is when that happened. Uh, like they was... also stopped publishing Dragon Magazine in 2004. Somebody so. else picked it up. So who picked it up? I actually know this answer, and these guys contact me to uh, do games like this, to review games like this, and they're very, very popular. This is like an answer that if you know D&D, &D, you've heard of these guys. It's It's... It's still around, still doing it. It's another one of those you know it or you don't kind of things. Honestly, I, I can't say I do. I'm Did probably you, any of you guys know. I'm gonna take a stab in the dark. Hasbro, because they're the current owners of DD. No, because Hasbro would take it would have kept if Wizards was kept it, Hasbro mm -hmm. would keep it as well. No, this is a completely different company. I got nothing. They are headed by former Wizard staff, though, I know that. No. Oh. As soon as you say it, I'm going to remember it. Right? So it's the P. E. Pinnacle? Paizo. Paizo. No Pizal. idea. Oh, you've never heard of Paizo? Never okay. heard of Paizo. Yeah, I Pizal think I know that. constantly sends me emails regarding... We're discarding it. Oh, uh, well. Sure. All right. <laughs> From now on. <laughs> right. Discarding it to the bottom of the file. Um, yeah, that's just the same time. All right, go ahead and hand me, and I will go ahead and take a stab at getting a three. Three? That's how you call dice, my friends. Come on, 50-50 answer. 50-50. Right. Which ancient ruined city in a subtropical climate contains a hidden shrine dedicated to Zathuthula, a vampire god of the underworld? That's like a 50-50 answer. <laughs> Which what? <laughs> Which ancient ruined city in subtropical climate contains a hidden shrine dedicated to Zathuthula? Are there multiple, are there different, like... <laughs> Is there how many how many are there? Is there a lot? Um, I don't know. No, um, that's not what I can answer. Oh, um, the um city. okay, okay. I, I don't. I will know. give you a small hint that might help a little bit. Mm -hmm. Is it something you, I know? 
I'm not going to say yes or no on that because I don't know what you do and don't know, but I'm going to give you like a very small hint. The name sounds like an actual like Japanese name of a person. I'm going to say you probably don't know that. I know. I, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to pass on this one. So I don't know it. Water. Tomoe Chen. Tomoe Chen. Yeah. No clue. No clue. It's okay though. I'm on a space. So that I have See, and here I was going to say water deep. We are. By the way, I'm currently on a space. Yeah. By the way, I almost made that a BB oh, in my campaign. So. Sounds surprising. Well, we, we all have access to getting our second or third. Alright. Salamander eggs are two foot diameter spheres of which stone? I want to say obsidian. Right? Okay. Obsidian is correct. Ha! Finally got one! You got two now. You're, on, you're, you're, you're I think you're tied? Or yep. Tied. It's more the fact that I've been in the monster spot this entire time and I kept failing. I'm very disappointed in myself, mostly. You get to roll again. I know. And you need to roll a seven. <laughs> okay, can I use the d20 for this? No. <laughs> Even though I brought my own? Nope. You can roll a two, that works as well. Right or left? Uh, roll me towards the gelatinous cube. Come and join me. You need a five. Two is not acceptable. Mm. So the yellow is purple or blue? Blue. Yeah. Oh, blue, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. That one's more central. Which fiendish foe initially became known in Greyhawk through rumors that he was building a road of human skulls to his capital, Dokra? Vecna. Wrong. Ayuz. Ayuz. Yuz. Yuz. Never heard of it. Uz. Yuz. Alright. No, Yuz was a dark deity. And, uh, yeah, right. Draw Give me a blue. For, for Max. Give me a blue. Oh. Oh, yeah. No a problem. blue for you. Um, I'm stuck here forever. <laughs> <coughs> no, yeah, maybe. Uh, what no, is fun. the surname of Elminster, the legendary mage of the Forgotten Realms? It's a magic card. It's actually a planeswalker. I know this one. Do I know this you one? Don't, Do you don't. You own one? it. <laughs> that does not help me. Well, Sister and I know nothing about Magic the Gathering. Do you know this one? No. Next, I, I don't think the magic would help him because the card is literally called Hellminster, sadly. Does it have the surname? So. Oh, yeah, no, that, 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 ouch. That's cool to know that's actually a magic. It is, it's a planeswalker. I'm gonna just call it as Thane. Sure. Revelio. Amar. Amar. Uh, All right. You're blue still, I right? Know. I think I got that one. Um, no, he's white, he's yellow. yellow. Yeah. Oh, you're yellow. Okay. Yeah, yellow. That's Good. Another one History. was scary. What D and D campaign setting was described in Art and Arcana as more Mad Max than Middle Earth? The D and D campaign setting that was described in Art and Arcana as a more Mad Max than Middle Earth. Uh, I think I know the answer to this one. You are so cute. Uh, the, it's a very, very straightforward answer. It's one of those probably you know what you don't type of things. Um, I don't know this one at all. Can't give you any hints, because... As in, like, it's one of the collections, like, Tasha's... Um, the... Oh, no, no, think, like, Greyhawk and Dragonlance. It has a name like that that's supposed to be iconic to D&D. &D. Okay. its own setting. Yeah, and think Mad Max. So, I can tell you that Mad Max is uh, a desert theme. You know Mad Max? Yeah, no, I know, I know Mad Max more than well enough there. As far as this one, I have no idea on. I... Um... You're gonna pass on it or you're gonna take a stab? I, I wouldn't know the answer. I wouldn't even be able to take a stab at it. Though, so the, 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 word, the, the two words are opposites of each other. Two words are opposites of each other. That's... Yeah. So like. Um, Dark Sun? Yes. Not bad! I was gonna say, oh no. So nice. I, honestly, the only reason why I even got that was because you said they're opposites. Right, that's So I was mean. thinking light and dark, I'm like, sun dark, no. Okay, oh, so it's dark sun. sun. Your turn now, and you're on pink. I, I am. Right? Pink. Dungeons and Adventures. I might be able to get one of these. So you didn't even know the, like, the actual city there or right. one out there. You, you just guess. guess. <laughs> nice. So, in yeah. Dead in Fey, what magic device allows travel through the gates connecting the different areas of the Doom Vault? First off, okay. Yeah, well, yeah, I'll, all I can cool. do is guess transportation devices, right? So, yeah. I mean, a portal would be the most obvious one. Oh, no, no, okay. So, the question was, what magic device allows travel through the gates? Oh. So, 
It's a two-word thing. If you're, if you're able to get either of the words, I'll give it to you. I mean, my guess was going to be a rune. Close. The glyph keys. Each glyph key is attuned to a specific zone. Okay, so and it's resembles a key a crystal, with a rune on it then, basically, right? It resembles a crystal pendant on a bronze chain. Okay. But I mean, a glyph and a rune are essentially the same thing. Yes, but I didn't say a key. So I, I figured it was some type of magical infused object, and I figured it had to be something older, and I'm like, well, a rune would have some type of magical power. Mm -hmm. Problem is, it was a mechanical Four. item. Five. Five. Damn it. Moving to green. What second level illusion spell requires an eyelash encased in gum arabics in its uh, material component? I actually know this one. Um, minor illusion, I want to say? Before you, oh, you can't look before you tell me you know it. you got to tell me what it is before you look. A minor illusion? I think so. All right, what is it? Invisibility. Invisibility. I actually was wrong in my thought process because I thought it was the slow. Oh, no, no, no. no. Um, slow's molasses. Yes. Uh, you're up. I'm up. No, oh, yeah, you're, he's up to draw a card. Oh, blue, yep. Yeah. And you're already on blue, so... Characters. Yeah. Characters for 500, Mike. <laughs> In Dragonlance, was the name of the dwarf one of the heroes of the Lance who started out as a jeweler in Solus? Since I definitely don't know, I'm going to have fun and go, Gimli! Anybody else want to take any steps? I got nothing on that one. Heck no. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. It is Flint Fireforge. That's a cool name. I like it. Right. Definitely would not. Don't know it, but yeah, no, it is, it is a good name. All right, you're still on yellow. Yeah, that place. <laughs> All right, history. What D and D books call the person who ran a game before the term dungeon master came into use? So what was it before a dungeon master? I actually think I know this, and I I, I, I know what I would assume. Um. <clears throat> Game Master? That's what I actually thought as well. And uh, let's see if you're right. Oh, wow. Um, no, it was a referee. A term that, along with the judge, was common in earlier war games. Wow. Oh, a referee. Huh. There you go. That's some knowledge for you. Yeah. I thought a Game Master might come before a Dungeon Master, right? Again, in first edition, the guy behind the screen actually rolled all the dice for everybody. They just had to say like what their bonuses were. So that's why he was more refereeing than actually like running the game himself. It does make a sense. It's just not the first thing that comes to mind, um, especially with how well, they evolve nowadays. Uh, what color do you want? I am on, he is on pink. pink Dungeons and Adventures. I get one of these at some point. Which nineteen Which nineteen eighty eight computer game was primarily set in and around the city of Flan and the Moon Sea region of the Forgotten Realms? Nineteen ninety eight. Yeah, computer game. I mean, it'd be interesting. I, I think I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with my gut and say orcs and humans. Pool of radiance. Okay, I was way off. I thought orcs and humans because know. that orcs and humans seems like it could be based off of D and D. It also seems oh. to be the right time zone. Six. Is 1998. Six is good. Six will put you on blue with me. All right, moving. Do you know um, what the series of orcs and humans is from? Nope. I mean, I played the game, but no. I've heard uh, of it. If you've played I've the never... game, you would know the series, I promise you. It's one of the most popular series in existence, and it's based an entire company off of its main its game. I got nothing. It's called World of Warcraft. Oh! It's also called Warcraft. Orcs and Humans was the original World of Warcraft game, which was based on, I don't know about D&D, &D, but that uh, world. So, okay, what color are we on? Oh, uh, I have the card for it. Oh, you do. Oh, which oh, gladiator see. from Dark Sun books was portrayed by Braum as a muscular woman with a horned helmet over her upper face. Read that again? Which gladiator from the Dark Sun books was portrayed by Braum as a muscular woman with a horned helmet over her upper face? I actually read this book. The name Eliza is sticking to my head for some reason. I don't know why. Nevia. Nevia. Ne N E E V A. Mm -hmm. I actually read that book because I remember that I remember the name for Brom. Oh, Neva then, right? With no I? 
N E E V A. Neva. That sounds like Neva. All right, give me a blue. In Dragonlance, I see you grab all the ones. Um, I know it doesn't help me. The Witch Kender was an avid collector of maps and joined the companions after borrowing a bracelet from the from Flint Forge. And I have to, I have to do the air quotes. Um, that's what I think it is. You might have actually remembered my first campaign. Ran into so many people. No, no, the guy specifically in the map shop in the Seven Sands. I know it was forever ago, but like, I actually like give you his name. And I'm the worst person when it comes to names in everywhere. So like, yes. I, I can give you a hint at his, possibly at his race, and you can correct me if you, if you want to. I mean, I'll take the hint. Uh, I believe he's a halfling. I got nothing. All right, who is it? Tasselhoff Burfoot. Yep. You can tell by the last name he was a halfling. Um, but you're up, and you're uh, still on yellow. History. Yellow history. What was the first D and D collectible card game released in 1994, shortly after Magic: The Gathering? Oh my god! Uh, I've heard monsters and mayhem spin in my head for some reason. I don't think that's it. You're smiling like you know it though. Um, yeah, I, I have this this, this card game. Ah. Uh, that they are no longer in existence. Um, it was short run, and it was right after Magic. It was sold at Wizards of the Coast for a short time. And you can find it at most uh, retail locations, actually. I believe like Target and Walmart would have it. But then, it's, but it's not, not available now, it's, right? It's not available now, and it was not super popular. Didn't it's one you know. word. Yeah. Did you, I, want, I, I, you, either, you either know it or you don't kind of thing. That's all Pokemon. You said it's one word? It's, it's one Pokemon word, was actually yeah. popular. Dungeons? It, it's Spellfire. Spellfire was the. the I've heard, I've heard was, Legends of Spellfire. It was right, right after. So. I've, I've heard of Spellfire. Never played it there. Yeah, but I have yeah, it, was, it was not a hugely like popular game, which is why Magic Mike is, is still a, around. Uh, Mike is on <laughs> Adventures and yeah, no, it's his turn. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mike. Uh, uh, Mike. Two Mikes. Okay. Yeah. Dungeons. In Module D three, Vault of the Drow, players can enter <laughs> the Fane of Loth, and what is a Fane? A Fane. Oh. That's, why does it have all this stuff before it? Misleading. What is uh-huh. vain? Okay. By the way, Volth is actually the drow as spider goddess who originally worked with Corellian and was actually one of his servants. Do I just have to tell you like what type of humanoid creature it is? No, no, no. no. Um, okay, so... The players can encounter the fane of Volth. What is a fane? It's a location. Um, oh, so you're not talking about the creature type fame? No. Oh no. Wait, wait, how's that spelled? F A N E. Oh, okay. No, I thought it was the T H one. Um, which is that's a job. Yeah, um, fame is what you're thinking of. Right. Um, anyways, no, so Wolf, uh, Wolf is actually one of the main things that my character So, like, a thing could be something like, I don't know, like a cavern, for instance. So this is what the type of answer is going to be. Close, yes. Uh, so, okay, okay. Um,. Now his point is, I had to spend half a campaign convincing followers of Wolf to betray her and turn to Crowley. It was a fright. How about how about it's 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 a bog or swamp, a shrine or temple? Damn. Okay. I actually thought you had it right with the cavern, honestly. Um, not, okay. Here's the thing. It's well, in the I, Underdark, I, so he was halfway there. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> I just figured I would like. Okay, I want to get in the right category. I, I thought he was referring to a, a creature uh, of a fame. That's what I thought the very first time I ever heard it too, but I actually did have to destroy the fane of Loth in the campaign I was in, so I actually knew this one. Previous experience. Previous right. experience. Well, it's like kind of like the dungeon or whatever. Like like, okay. In Dark Sun, who is the undead dragon king who reigns below the ruined ancient city of Lustiel? That's not what I think me. No, that's to you. That's to me. You just did a question Oh, for right! I yeah. thought Fane was like a woodland creature. Sorry, I was still on the Fane like, thing. Like, okay, like, sorry. Like, <laughs> if he's that boring, I wasn't paying attention. I'm like, sorry. Like a deer-like creature, right? All right. That's what, what you... I was thinking. In Dark Sun, who is the undead dragon king who reigns below the ruined ancient city of Glastail? G-I-U-S-T-E-N-A-L. King... 
Varathin? Drigoth. Drigoth. Flight Sailor. Um. All of it, I have no idea on that. That would just be sheer oh, yeah. that guy. Luck. <laughs> how many letters are there in the alphabet and how many can I assemble? Oh, God. Dragoth. <laughs> that sounds like a Cthulian type monster. Uh, there's a name. I mean, there's a Cthulian type monster that has a name close to it. Draw, uh, yeah, it's uh, Dagoth. Yeah. That's why it sounds like. The Give me blue. blue. Crazy history. Anyway. Hate store. I actually have um, Cthulhu Wars somewhere around no, here. I apparently put hate store in my game without realizing it. I got called on and I was like, apparently I did. Okay, we're doing this. Now I got something to check out. Um, in the computer game Planescape Torment, oh, no. what is the name of the floating talking skull who can join your party? The specific Bob. name? <laughs> Maybe something stupid it's like Bob or like Tim or something. But yeah. here's the thing there is that he has character, so it's all going to be around a character. So, yeah, this is a character. Um, Karth? Karth? Any, Karth any other guesses? Lion. No, that's it. Go, flip it okay. over. Uh, Morty. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. With an E, by the way. It's going to be um, Bob or Tim or something. Or some dumbass dumb. name like that. Yeah. It's Morty with an E. Yeah, that's, um, uh, still... I'm Eric with a K, so how do you spell that? With a K. <laughs> so you're still in history, my friend. Yeah, that place yes, Which Academy Award-winning screenwriter did Gary Gaiax in 1982 to write a script for a D&D movie. Oh my god. I, no, I was wrong. I was wrong. Okay. But uh, it is... Does so Gary Busey account? No? Which no, Academy no, Award winning? It's a screenwriter. Did Guy Gax tap in 1982 to write the script for D&D? The original one. This one did not actually happen. There is one coming out soon, actually. There actually was a D&D movie originally. There were that, actually that, a few. Yeah. I have one in oh. D&D. Okay, sorry, there, there was one that they didn't do. This yeah. one I think they might have done then. Let me see. Let and me uh, see. The one that I remember before this, there's actually a church somewhere in the Netherlands, I think it was. I'll give you a, a bonus hint. Bonus hint is, he won an Oscar for The Lion in Winter in 1968. <coughs> yeah, I know. I'm horrible with screenwriters as is. <coughs> um, <coughs> I'm going to hand this one off there if anybody wants to take a guess, but otherwise I'm, I am passing on this one because I can save one. I got nothing. I since James Goldman. Oh! Yeah. Never oh. heard. I don't know why they gave that as a hint. Um, that was one of the not as greatest hints. Uh, <laughs> Alright, so it's your turn now, I believe. Yep. It is. Yeah. Pink. It is. Uh, Dungeons Adventures for, for, for 100, please, so I can actually get it right. <laughs> In the Baldur's Gate computer game series, yes! Faerun has become populated with the children of which dead god, the Lord of Murder? He's getting so excited. Oh, oh, oh. Because if I'm right, it's from Magic the, the Magic the Gathering D&D &D set. As well. It's Ball. Correct. Yeah! Ball, the children of Ball are called the Ball Spawn, and he hopes to use them to revive himself. I just like saying I have ball. the card. I can pull it out, but I'll just mm -hmm. put it up on the screen. Ball, Lord of Mort Murder. Roll the dice. It's actually a commander as well. Yeah. I yeah. have, like, five of him. I know. I'm like, wait. <laughs> this is from the D&D set. <laughs> Yes, Magic the Gathering is saving me again. Let's go with six. Um, I you go either way there, you're, you're one short. Yellow or purple? purple. Well, well, we're not. But you're oh, yeah, you're hard, 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 so it's not going to go that way. That way everybody can be on character. <laughs> wow. wow. I can't believe I got that right. Second edition AD&D was the last edition to date to support the advanced version. True or false? Second edition to support the advanced. False. True. Okay. I, I actually I'm, I have no idea. True. I, I'm a little annoyed that his very first history question in quite a while there is What's the that? true false one there. <laughs> no, you're sitting over there suffering. Yeah. Sadly, I was going to What's this guy <laughs> Dralt and Rengar are father and son from which noble family of Waterdeep with ancestral ties to Neverwinter? Ooh. Neverwinter Nights is also a popular video game series that I think they just replaced as well. Mm -hmm. I want to say it's the Rubiax clan for some reason. Neve uh, November. November. I have no idea where I got Rubiax from. <laughs> You're up, Max. Give me a blue. Let me all help you. This is why you got to run stuff from the books, kids. Don't just homebrew everything. Two the books make it extremely easier to deal with things. Okay, I keep getting repeats there in a sense. Um, 
in the computer game Planescape Torment, <laughs> the character um, Fall from Grace is what kind of infernal creature? This should be a little easier, at least than trying to name them. Um, a fallen infernal creature? Uh, the name of the character is Fall from Grace. What type of creature are That's they? The character. That is an infernal creature. I believe this is a tactics game, if I played it. Is it? I believe so. It's, it's the Planes, Planes Chase? Planescape Torment. Planescape, Planescape Torment. Yeah, it's a magic, it's a, isn't it also a Magic the Gathering game? I don't believe so. Let me see, or is, is it just a D&D game? I believe it's just a D&D, but I, it doesn't give me any info like that. Um, I don't know. But, but you still have to answer it. But I'm gonna say Lucifer because yeah. No, 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 no. So you're thinking a name. This is a character, uh, this is a type. The character's name oh. is Fall from Grace. What okay. are they? Um, they are an infernal creature. What kind? Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's a it's a it's a role playing video game. It's Think a, about the it's name for a second, Fall from thing. Grace. There's only so many. <clears throat> well, no, it's this more is probably one of your best shots of it. Uh, I know. Sorry. <laughs> Just give what you think the answer is. The worst infernal. case scenario, wrong. No, infernal. No. It is an infernal. What type of infernal? <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> trying to remember the So think of it like this. It's a cat, races. but what type of cat? Yeah. <laughs> what kind of infernals are there? Tabby. Dalmatian. <laughs> uh, yes, no. yes. No, Dalmatians are demon, not devil. Oh, 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 oh. I mean, if I have to go past infernal, I've got no idea. You don't know what type of infernals are? You can just, like, shoot one out, right? Yeah. Succubus. There you go. Holy shit. Uh, there's only so many of them there. Uh, there's actually quite a few. I know, but it's still a lot less generic there than. And I'm finally like... on the board. Holy crap. Oh, that's your first one? That's my first one. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. Um, you know. One. Join history. Give me history. I suck at history, but give me history. Wow, your first one. Man. Yeah, I mean, you play D&D once a week. Every week okay. for the last, I don't know how long. Three some years. So, so this one, I don't know, but I can obviously stab at it there, but uh, you might be able to answer this one. How many alignments were there in D&D after Gary Gygax expanded to the fourfold way in 1976? Well, I don't know if it's changed since then, so I'm going to say nine. It's definitely changed since then. Wrong. It is still nine. Really? I mean, no, mind you, that's what it is what he changed to. Yeah, what he changed to from then on. But I'm sure at the beginning there were probably less than nine. Uh, in like the beginning there actually wasn't alignments. Oh, there you go then. It was just good, evil, and that's it. It's it's the question was has he changed it from that point? Because I'm like, yeah, there must right. have been only a certain amount, you know. Nope, he hasn't changed it since then. So was it just zero then straight to nine? Uh, it was no. it was technically two because it was just like good and evil and that's yeah. pretty much like all you have for like alignment. After that, you have the alignment chart, which is good, neutral, evil, and like chaotic, chaotic and all. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I just mean that like there was some part where there was less than nine. Oh, one hundred percent. So they didn't have a neutral when there was good and evil. No, no, because no, again, like you were heroes out to destroy the big bad evil bad. Like there wasn't like nuance back then. Huh? Give me green. And he's not real. Um. What is the first level illusion spell? What first level illusion spell creates an array of flashing colored lights that can blind opponents? I actually know the semantic components for this. Oh man, I know this one too. And if he doesn't know the answer, can I give it? I mean, honestly, you can both throw a guess there, but wait till he gets it to give throws a guess first. That's fair. God damn, I know this spell too, and I cannot think of the name for the life of Actually, you don't know this spell in game. No, no, in game I haven't used this spell, but I do know the spell. Well, if you it's... know it, what is it? You got five seconds. I would not have guessed it myself. I actually was looking at it recently, though. Nice. So, that was... I only... I, I color don't... spray. I was going to say color spray initially, was... but minor illusion was... I was well, thinking, right? like, exactly. blinding ray. If I remember that being a spell there, but that's like a third level spell or some shit, yep. right? Next question. All right. Where, are you still on He's history? Yellow. Wow, man. All right. I don't get to go nowhere. <laughs> Which California company's polyhedral dice did TSR resell at the very beginning of D&D? They're, they're still in production right now. 
Yeah, I'm going to guess Sites. I'm not going to know. Oh, no, I was no. actually completely wrong. Well, California companies, Polyhedral Dice, did TSR resell <clears> at the very beginning of D&D. TSR is what? Stand for? I actually don't know. Oh, interesting. Um, do you get a pass on this one? I'm going to pass because I do not know it at all. Do you know? I think it's Chessex. I, that's what I thought too. Uh, it's Creative Publications, a Palo Alto, California educational supply company. So it may be... Oh, right, they made math dice. That's what people used initially. Right. I did not know that. I, I don't know why I thought Chessex, but that's because I think most people use Chessex to play D&D now. Yeah, they do. But they should Which use half dice because oh, yeah. half seas, uh, by Gatekeeper Games, have, uh, Gatekeeper Games has amazing dice. Yeah. Roll Two. Two. Yellow or orange? History? No. Monsters? Maybe. Anything. What is a term of a creature brought back to life by the animated spores of a Mycian sovereign? The animated creature brought back to life from the spores of a Mycian sovereign. Of a Mycian. 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 So Mycian is, can you tell me what a Mycian is? is, it, is They're it a type of spore. Okay, it is a spore like It's the one we were talking creature. about earlier. It's yeah. like a fungus type yeah. creature, right? Yeah. I'll give you a hint. Half the name is in the question. Yeah. Uh, give me, give me, give me, go through one once more, and I'm going to go for it. What is the term for a creature brought back to life by the animating spores of a Mycenaid sovereign? What type of creature is brought back to life? I mean, I'm guessing the stuff like this, I'm guessing the, 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 the sapling, like, or the, the big, the, the big sapling dude is, like, spitting out these spores, and there's, like, dead creatures from a battle where they pop back to life kind of like zombies, right? That's that's what I'm gathering from this. Yes. Um, and just what is that creature called? Yes, once it's risen. I have an idea. I, I can make a name. I don't know that one. I get half the name is in the question. Right. Sadly, I don't know. I don't know. Spore servant. A spore oh, servant. I would have said oh. spore mancer. I was thinking like something like animated spore zombie or something. Like that. <coughs> I, would not, I would not have gotten that. I, 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 I have actually that. seen like a bunch of movies where that like the you know, the spores radiate off some type of creature and looks up Resident they, Evil. They pop up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> Dove and Florian Falconhand were both members of which courageous adventuring company in Furra? Uh Fuck it, it was the something Griffins, right? Honestly, if that's right, uh, like yeah. if, that, if that's in the name, I'll take that. Yeah, is that your final answer? That's my final answer. Was the something Knights Griffins? of Myth Jarnar? All right, Knights no of Myth Jarnar. Yeah. No, wait, no, their symbol was a griffin. That's what it was. That's what I remember. Yeah. Prove it. And next question. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so so me. Yeah, you're on a roll. There you go. Three. Three. Where are you? Which one? Put me closer to purple, so it puts me in monsters. All right. I can at least do monsters. But can you, though? Give me orange. Oh, here you go. You can take this. This is a good one. I have no idea if it's a good one. <laughs> uh, let's see. Which type of giant ranks highest in the castle uh, cast structure of giant society? Frost, storm, cloud, hill, fire, stone. Honestly, I want to put my money in Fire Giant. That's what I would do as well. I believe that's wrong. But, uh, do, do you want to weigh in on this? Strongest Giant. Oh, or, no, Cloud not, Giants. Clouds? Not, uh, not, uh... The highest ranking in their hierarchy. Yes. Right. Cloud Giants. Yeah, that's, uh, no. Storm. Storm. I had that wrong. I thought it was Cloud was, as well. That was guess number two. I was going off of Elden Ring, though, because in Elden Ring, the best, most difficult giant was a Fire Giant. Okay, I can't. <laughs> I was with simple. Alex. I was initially thinking cloud, but then I ended up going for fire. Well, storms are just stronger versions. History, of oh history, is the faux wood grain on the original first <clears throat> printing D and D box a horizontal grain or vertical? Oh, that's so nice. Is the grain on D and D the box, the original box, this way or this way? <clears throat> it's a uh, horizontal, right? It is absolutely. That would be my first fifty. <laughs> my guess as well. And you're finally on the history category. Congratulations. Yes. He is now we'll leave the books behind. We'll leave the books behind. Yeah, I, I, I am. I, I weep for when I have to get to yellow. You have uh, green, <coughs> yellow, and pink. All right. So I, I, I definitely want to be heading this way. There, it's not a pink. It's purple. I think. 
Whatever. Yeah. Moving on. A three. Three. Uno, dos, tres. Three. Dungeons and Adventures. Warm up on that. The 1988 Pool of Radiance computer game which is apparently a game I got wrong in a previous question, <laughs> drew upon the settings and scenarios of which model from the same year? Which model? Uh, yes, a, a model, like like he's been saying. This is, I believe, one that may have not been said before, but it's very close to one that had been said before. Would I look at the answer? Yeah. Has it been said before? If not, I think it's something close that to That was it. a pink one, right? Yes. Uh -huh. What's the name of module? Module. I said module. Module, yeah. There we go. Um, all right. Don't worry. I'll, I'll take this spot. <sighs> and I'm sure he'll appreciate every moment of my answering of his questions. Well, it's your turn anyways. I roll a two. Which puts you on roll again or yellow. I was about to say, you do have pick right now. Uh, let's go with roll again, actually. I don't want to go to yellow. Yellow is history. Yes. Yellow is history. A five. That puts five me on blue. blue which Perfect. Is... Where you would want to be. <sighs> let, me, let me take care of this. In Ebron, which order of druids believes that arcane magic is, the, is an abomination against nature? <sighs> order of druids. Yep, I know this one, actually. We call it something a little different in our campaign. Can you give me an order of druids that is not the answer? So that I know at least the type of orders that I'm trying to right. reference? That will be a better question answered by Alex, the DM of our group. Okay. Well, he's right so, here. Alex, the question is, in Ebron, which order of druids believes that our, uh, arcane magic is an abomination This is for me, by the way, so don't answer it. I need to know a druid, a, a type of druid that is that does not believe this. So I have a, a purview of like what type of orders I'm looking at. He wants an example. Okay, so I need to actually hear the question okay, if you don't okay. mind. In Ebron, which In Ebron. order of druids believes that arcane magic is an abomination against nature? Okay, so first off, orders of druids are called circles. So it's the circle of X. Mm -hmm. And like, are you looking for me to give you like a multiple choice? On I this want one? you to no. I want you to give me just one order that that is not the answer. An example. Yes. Oh, um, the or the circle of wildfire. Okay. They they actually like arcane magic because they can use it to just destroy everything. Okay. And so I wouldn't have known wild. So wildfire is what. So because I was hoping I, I was just gonna go with order of light is probably what I was going to. Or circle of light is probably what I'd go with them. Um, is that what you're gonna go with? Yes. The ashbound. Okay. Is oh, what? So I had, I had no chance then. <laughs> I thought it was like Silent Moon or something like that. Actually, um, actually, there's a reason why I said the Circle of Wildfire specifically. The Ashbound actually exists as a byproduct of the Circle of Wildfire. Interesting. <laughs> All right, and uh, now it's your turn. Now it is his turn. Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> In Ebron, which order of druids uh, venerate the force of death, seeking to cleanse the land through blight, disease, and cold? A circle of the spore, I believe. The children of winter. Ah, there you go. Well, a little on point. That, 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 was, that was an on point name. <clears throat> Two. Brilliant. Oh no, that puts me on orange, but just monsters. Alright, might give him some monsters. Give me monsters. Give it to me. <clears throat> the invisible stalker is transformation of which type of elemental? Uh, honestly, I'd have to say at that point the wind elementals. That's what I'm thinking as well. Anybody wants to throw anything else yeah, in there? I got nothing for it. Yeah, air. Yeah. Yeah. DM? Air and wind close enough? Oh, yeah, no, that works. Okay. Okay. Yeah, air elementals are from the primordial plane of wind, so same thing. Give me monsters. <laughs> <coughs> Wait, no, hold on. That is monsters, my bad. You attempt to open a chest, which suddenly sprouts pseudopods and attacks. What type of creature have you encountered? It is what Mike currently is on the mimic. What? No, 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 no. Mimic's not a mimic, there was a chest. Um, <laughs> mimic. <laughs> Did you hit? Have you ever played Dark Souls? Yes. Right? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's why I referenced Give that. me monsters. Yeah. Enter the Gungeon one, but yes, Dark Souls has mimics as well. Actually, so does Elder Ring. A lot played of dungeon rings, divers so, have so does it's based in Dark Souls, but better. A lot of a lot of dungeon divers of any kind have. Anyways, asking his third monster question. 
Oh, another one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how many tentacles emerge from the head of a mind flayer? Oh, that's fun! <laughs> I mean, that probably would vary. We kind of have a mind flayer mini over there. Alright. Nope, All there right. actually is one specific answer. I'm gonna go with four. Is that a yes or Well, no? again. <laughs> this will make fourth correct answer if you get one more. Rolling. You know, five, six, ain't gonna do it. You're just dancing around it. You go monsters again. <laughs> yeah, it's purple. So it's cosmology or monsters. Any monsters. Alrighty. Speaking of Rakashas, a Rakasha combines the features of a human with which animal? Tiger. Are you sure about this? I said too much earlier. Really. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I that would have been the right answer. Roll again. That's well, a freebie. We also agree at the beginning of the game, four right answers, and that's when you stop. That was my fourth correct answer. Oh, that's true. Yeah. It is. All right. Well, I'm not turn. doing history for you. And you did that mostly to kneecap me. That's the funniest part. <laughs> See, leave it to me when it comes to doing that stuff, because I actually like fighting things. Well, there's also the fact that you've got monsters how many times to roll? <laughs> <laughs> a one. Roll, you can go to the roll again. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, 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 you are right, so yeah. We can get a five, try and get that, that orange one there. Any, anything but a one, I'll still go further. Uh, four. You go backwards to roll again? To yeah, roll but I mean, that's all the stuff I have yellow. in that direction. Yeah, so you probably want four to purple. Yeah. Uh, Alright, cosmology. In Greyhawk, what is the name of the largest and the deepest freshwater body in the Flaneus? F L A N A E S S. Planaeus, which name means Lake of Unknown Depths. What is the name of the largest and deepest freshwater water body in Planaeus, which name means Lake of Unknown Depths? I'm not going to know that one. Yeah. Uh, I'll probably recognize it, but the, I'm not going to know it. Near Deep. Yeah. Yeah. Near Deep. Okay. It's Elma. Well, I mean, if you know what I said based on what I said. If you know Elvin, I know. Mean, Alright. Um, like I said, I don't know Elvin, I don't know Klingon, none of those. I'm a little bit Japanese. Give me my <laughs> All right. blue. Give me a blue one. I'm ready. Characters. I'm not ready. Japanese. It's like, do I have monsters yet? I do. <clears throat> Sadly. I'm In the up. Eberron, what shadowy alliance is made up of Corvair's wealthiest citizens using gold to increase their influence? By the way, fun fact, Corvair is actually a city of undeath, so it's always fun. What? What alliance? Oh. Is made up of Corvair's wealthiest citizens. Yeah, I don't know the Noble Alliance. <laughs> the A Room. Yeah. The singular room of alliancing. The A Room of Alliance. A U R U M. Yeah, a room of alliance. Alright, you ready? <laughs> yeah. In Ebron, what ancient scheming religion possessed that possesses that blood is the source of life and undeath is a path of Path to divinity. What ancient scheming? What? What ancient scheming religion pr uh, proposes that blood is the source of life and undeath is a path to divinity? Again, it could be any cult of some kind. Yeah, no, I get that. I get cult that. of Satan. <laughs> no, it's the um. God, Zander was running this before that campaign ended. Like, they had something about, like, blood vials and using them to track people. Um, Vampire? That is close. I will give it that. I'm going to say vile blood? Just to have a name? The blood of Vol. The blood of Vol! Which is where all the dragon marks come from. Which I'm, I'm surprised you actually cut... Didn't remember that one, considering Dragon Mark for a massive thing in our last campaign. Look, I homebrewed the hell out of that, okay? <laughs> it was still amazing as hell. You're welcome. Alright, next one. Six. <laughs> Go on blue. You know you want to. When we hit two hours, we're going to do a sudden death, or the person with the most is the winner. <clears throat> sudden, be Mike. sudden death will be... Surprisingly. If, so, if we yeah. have three and three, we'll have two cards, we'll read through all the questions, and if you get two out of three, five right, and he gets three out of five, he will win. So whoever has the most questions right on one singular card. Give me monsters. 
Uh, I'm going to title this video Two Hours of D&D Trivia. It's not even going to be D&D Trivial Pursuit, because <laughs> it's just going to be two hours of trivia. <laughs> Which denizens of the Underdark breed Quagoths and use them as minions? Quagoths. Quagoths? But do you know the answer? Oh. Uh, I think I do. It's more obvious than you might think. I want to, I want to say it's like the, the Demir, but that's not the name of name of them. Actually, two of the most common races down there do start with a D. You're not wrong. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm just trying to remember exactly how it's said. That first thing comes to my mind is Skyrim, it. which is Dwemer. If you can describe it correctly, he has the, the name for it off counter as well. It, it's the it's the dwarf version of the guys that live down there. That's so you're saying the Duragar. Duragar. Okay. So is final that, answer is Dwarf. Yeah. Yep. Is the Drow. The Drow. Like I said, it's more obvious than it seems. Yep. Um, Quagoth are giant spider things. Yeah. Those bastards. Okay. Yeah. If I had said that, you would have instantly known Drow. Oh. Now, mind you, if I hadn't looked, I wouldn't have thought of Drow either. Just. It, but he did say Dwarf, and that's what he was looking for. So. Exactly. All right. Yep. Um, I believe it's you now, and you're going to take it to roll. <coughs> I had a one. Four. Four. Just like a one. Um. <laughs> It's gonna put you on blue. Roll again. Yeah. yeah. Um. Still need that five. Nope. All right, you get the five. You get the one. All right, you're going to yeah. go for Dungeon League yeah. Adventures. In Boulder's Gate, descent into Avernus. What object must be given to enter Candle Keep, the fortress that boasts one of the finest libraries in Faroon? Faroon. Yeah. I wanted to add the accent. All right. Oh, okay. It's a pretty straightforward one. In Boulder's Gate, descent in Avernus, what object must be given to enter Candlekeep, the fortress that boasts one of the finest libraries in Beirut? I mean, first thing that comes to mind is token, second thing that comes to mind there. Well, well think about it. What object should I know, be given? I know, Candlekeep. What object should a be candle? given? No, 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 wait. Listen, let me finish. What object should be given to enter this named place, the fortress that boasts one of the finest libraries in Faerun? Wait, what should you give a place that has, that likes candles? All right, the answer is books. To oh, give the to, library. To give to the finest library. <laughs> you have to give books to enter the library. Yeah. Okay, okay. Which, okay. by the way, if you end up giving them a book that they don't already have, they actually do thank you. So, there's that. I yeah. imagine that would make sense. I mean, they, that's why they post the finest library. They probably have, like, one book, and they're like, all right, we'll just start getting books because people come in. <laughs> give them a blue yeah, I, I actually might have a chance to, uh, to to enter the final countdown here, the, the, the final showdown. I just have to get a 50-50. <laughs> in Eberron, what group of priests and paladins op operating out of Flame Keep has battled the forces of darkness for centuries? Yep, I was... I know these assholes. They nearly killed me 17 times. Um, okay, what, in, in Eberron, what type... What, 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 what? Okay, so there is a specific belief structure in Eberron. What is the name of that belief structure? Uh, what group of priests and paladins operating out of Flame Keep has battled the forces of darkness for centuries? I think I know this one. All right, so, so we're not talking about um, um, how in, in Castlevania you've got the... the <laughs> what, 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 what's the what, Belmonts is what yeah, you the, 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 Yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the like Bel Belmonts, yeah, yeah. yeah. But so yeah. Know, it's like the Order of Something or the, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the Order of No Quarter. Wait, the game. Order yeah. of Sacred Flame. The Church of the Silver Flame, actually. No, really? Seriously. I, I, see, I was thinking it was Eternal Flame. Oh. oh. Wow. I, was, I mean, I, I was would give it to him. That's pretty dang close. That's way close. In the I say give it to him, first Yeah. Time. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Which this puts him in tie with Mike for first place, too. You have to beat the guy who doesn't... Play D&D. Can you do it? <laughs> I kind of want him to win because it would be the ultimate upset. Yes, it would. The ultimate 99 roll. I never saw it coming. Roll again, bitch. I saw it coming. There's there's a 50-50 chance there it's a mic. <laughs> roll again or roll again. Um, we're going to have to go this way. So, a six. One, two, three, four, five. I feel like I should go this way because I already have... I have all these rest, guys. yeah. So we're gonna go with this one. We're gonna go with uh, <coughs> monsters. Monsters. All right. You literally have the other half from what I have. What uh, two weapons do Solars use? What 
two weapons of Solars. Sadly, I don't know what a Solar is. So I'm going to take a stab in the dark. Two weapons. <sighs> okay, well, in general, the idea is you're going to either have, like, two daggers, a sword and a shield. If it's if it's, if it's it's uh, a wand, it's going to be, like, a rune stone of some type. Solar sounds like... Like, maybe it could be a soldier. So, I, I'm going to go with just the average sword and shield, probably. You were half right. The answers are a sword slash great sword or a bow slash longbow. Um, two oh. weapons. Oh, oh! I thought you meant they have to have, hold one weapon in each hand. Nope. No, it's the it's the short range versus long range. I was oh, thinking I bow and mace. Okay. No, so it's, so the, it was, it's it was bow not, and sword. It was not which two do they have to wield the same. It's what do they carry on them? Oh, okay. But I'm, uh, <laughs> So oh, I, was, I was, that's actually a pretty solid thing. So is it a soldier type weapon? A soldier type person? Okay. Cool. Okay. I have no idea who they are. <laughs> They're like infantry. In the no, world yeah. of Greyhawk, which wow. wizard betrayed the Circle of Eight? Oh, Vecna. Rary. Rary? What? R A R A. Splash is like Stranger Things. R Y. <laughs> Vecna's the cause of everything, okay? <laughs> actually, in Greyhawk, he kind of was, in all honesty. But. I have no idea that, how that is. All right, next question then. By the way, when we get to sudden death, I have an idea of how it, to do that. Is this, are you, are you, are you on um, Dungeons and Adventures? Yon T? Is that what you said? No, Rary. No, characters. Oh, the blue. Rary. R A R Y. Yeah. Rary. Mm. Okay. Six. Blue again. Blue again. <laughs> no, I have blue. So I gotta go this way. And then you'll end up on roll again. And then five. five. That puts me on purple. All right, you have an opportunity now. To, oh, to your second one. Cosmology. Yeah, <laughs> got screwed. Yes, I have. A farmer in Faerun says to you, "I am right to rural just now." What emotion is he? Is she trying to convey? Sadness. Any other guesses there? Flip it over. Just, that's oh, his. Okay. Uh, no, anger. Um, <laughs> anger? Let me see. Let me see. What is she trying to say? <clears throat> I am right to brule. Oh. <clears throat> oh. Oh, I am right to brule just now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that would sound like you'd be upset about something. I'm, I'm like, I'm very upset right now. I, I, I guess that's like on how you say it kind of thing. Exactly. Or like, I'm oh, right to brule. All right, roll. All right, I'll clear up. Wrong Mike! Oh, well, you said Mike. Alright, go ahead. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll take that for it. Okay, go ahead. Go for it. Uh, there, there we go. Monster. <laughs> Wait a <laughs> second. Alright, fine. Fine. Don't worry, this is going to be a hard one for you. How many years will a summoned spectator guard a treasure or a location? <laughs> oh. A summoned spectator. Summoned spectre. Um, S P E C T A T O R. Really? Spectator. This is a creature even I don't know them. Oh dang, that's actually really rare. Um, it's it's it's, it's years by the way. Yeah, I know. I figured as much there, but the question is if we're like talking like seventy years, or we're talking like thousands of years. I have um, idea. I, I'm going to guess. just go for a hundred and stick with that. Okay, that's what I was thinking. I'm gonna say a thousand. And. One off. A hundred and one? That's your That's your Though it will vanish if the object it is guarding is stolen or destroyed before the time is up. Mm -hmm. Wow, a hundred and one. You even said a hundred and one specifically earlier. Wait, today. no, I think I'm right though, um, because it's a. Uh, I said a year and one day earlier. Oh. Yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. They do that shenanigans often, so it's just over that just one amount. But no, I, it's a it's a well known fact that within a hundred years it will be stolen. So you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Once a night every time. <laughs> All right, where am I? Where am I? You guys haven't found Black Here. Razor yet. All right, so I need to go. I need a one, or I need a, a six. One or six, but a two. I, I got a lot of a lot of, a lot of chances. Green, magic and miscellany. What is the I term for the chance. pattern of magical runes that uniquely identifies each permanent teleportation circle? Uh, magic chance. Um, what is the what, what is the pattern called? Yes. What is the term for the pattern of magical runes that uniquely identifies each permanent teleportation circle? 
Prismatic. Sigil sequence. I'm like, prismatic is lots of colors, and people use that word. <laughs> prismatic is a type of dragon. But prismatic in general is just is many colors. So I would imagine that dragon is very colorful. I'm going to put you there. I so. Oh no. King Janel of sequence. King Janel of Arkapor, a, a city near Lake of Stream in Farun, was once a thief who went by what one word syllable nickname? Knife. <laughs> Pinch. Pinch. All right. For some reason, I feel like it's time, time for Max's. Give me purple. He needs a second. <laughs> we'll take me out of last place. Uh oh, we got eight minutes. In Faerun, Zental Keep is on the shore of what small inland sea? Glacial. The moon sea. We're, we're in the we're in the lightning round, so we're <laughs> gonna start trying to make sure everybody has a chance to get that final final countdown. Okay, well, what am I reading? What am I reading? Uh, orange. 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 Name one of two languages spoken by centaurs. Uh, um, one of two languages. What's one language that everything speaks? Uh, common? No. Elvish or Sylvan? Really? Yeah, I figured that might be the, the case. The Sylvan Library Magic, and it's one of the <coughs> centaurs' guard. Uh, guard. Yeah, what's your color again? I am purple. Yeah. Wait, no, 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 I am green. Green. Magic and miscellaneous. Manshun of the Zetherium often wore a magic battle gorg gorget, a piece of armor protecting what part of the body? A gorget protects what part of the body? Oh, I know this one, actually. A gorget. I thought it's a lot less complicated than I actually would have gotten this one. Likewise! Right. The gorget is that thing that goes around your neck up there. Above the, the shoulders. Metal, like, like collar ish. Yeah. Okay. Alright. The first black viper, whose true name was Othruin Orain, had long criminal career in what major city of Faroon? I'm gonna say Waterdeep. Waterdeep is correct. Hey! I got one! Nice. And, and you're on three. And that puts him in tie with both of you. I'm actually going to defend my honor here. Who we'll do the purple one? Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Orange? Oh, two the purple ones. Yep. Yeah. Alright, orange it is. Thank you, Matt. Sorry. Monster. <laughs> In which element do Alabroth dwell? Alabroth or water elementals, I believe. Water is correct. Hey, look at that. Oh, nice. Give me a woman. A two it is. What Monsters it is. Monsters. <laughs> He's pulling into my rep. Plantars have skin of what hue? A plantar? Yeah. I actually know. They were red, I believe. Opalescent green. Ah! I was, I was going to guess green. All right. I, I, was think, I was thinking it was more uh, the milky hue, like marble. Got it. Alright. Max is up. I'm on purple. I know I actually meant to defend my honor there. What is the name of the most populous continent on Eberron, where the five nations are located? Uh, uh, yeah, are located. If I actually know the Eberron map for this one, which I yeah, haven't shown it to you guys yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pass. Pass. Sad. Corvair. Which actually, yeah, I recognize the name. Monsters for you. You're stuck on the monsters. What grotesque elemental creature resembles a statue when perched motionless on a building? I know, I know, I know. You're correct. You are correct. <laughs> well, you got four now. Oh no. That puts Mike in the lead. I think he's pretty much one at this point. Not yet. We've got now, four are you, the reason why I think that happened exactly there is minutes. because you guys got stuck on character when I haven't even gotten there yet. Uh, three, four. Yellow. Yep. What was the first company to resell D and D in Great Britain? <laughs> okay, just think about a company that would sell D and D in a different country. I have no idea, honestly. Like, uh, that's not something I like. I know. Okay, well, name a company that sells D and D. Hasbro. Games Workshop. 
They do a lot no. of the D and D stuff separate. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. So I know that still works with um, with Games Workshop at, for D and D stuff as well. Nice. Name one of the two rare magic items that night hags craft and carry. A night hag. Yeah. Uh, By the way, one of these is actually an Andy. Uh, I have so much issue with that with the hags in our campaign. Um, a magical item that they equip to craft. I would guess. Uh, kind of like a witch. They are. I mean, that's what. They're super witches. Me. Yeah, they like, seem like witches to me. Three of them make a coven, and a coven is not unstoppable. So go ahead. <laughs> um, what would they have though? I mean, I, I'm just gonna go lazy here and say a wand. Heartstone or soul bag would have been the answer. Okay. So, Bring on soul bag. Cast either one. <laughs> um, All right. Roll, good sir. A wand or a soul bag. Yeah. Put me on purple. So these guys are dangerous then. I guess, oh, super ball. dangerous! They get NPC magic, which is they have to do whatever they want. I, I hate the I hate the ones in our campaign with a passion. They freak me out. They also have Ann and Andy, like Raggedy Ann and Andy is like adopted kids. It's hilarious. <laughs> I was so against that. <laughs> in the pantheon of Faroon, Shar, the mistress of the night, is the sister of which luminous deity? The pantheon of Faroon, Shar is the. I know it's the sun god, but I can't remember his name, so I'm going to say Solaris just to have a name out there. If you have sun god, honestly, I'll take it. Saloon, sometimes called the moon maiden. Saloon, the, the moon opposite. maiden. Moon. I was wrong! It was the opposite <laughs> end. And Max Give me up. purple. Alright. <clears throat> Gotta get that two. In, Dragon two. in Dragonlands. What terrible event caused Kryn to pass from the Age of Might into the Age of Darkness in a single hour? I can think of something generic off the top of my head, but I don't think that's it. The Return of Sauron. <laughs> I'm just going to say a time lapse. Uh, the Cataclysm. A fiery mountain fell upon the land, wreaking untold destruction. That in the World of Warcraft. Yeah. Right, it's an entire expansion. All right, go ahead and roll, Mike. A one. Roll again. Get that two, a six. So I got, I got orange on this side. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna go for that there. Okay. Um, if a Baylor, B A L O R, mm -hmm. and a Dretch get into a fight, which one is likely to win? Baylor or a Dretch? Nice 50 50. <laughs> yeah, that would have been my guess as well. I'm thinking the Baylor. The answer is correct. Baylor. Okay. That thing Roll sounds again. scary. I don't know what okay, okay. is. Okay, hold on. So Lord of the Rings? Oh, yeah. The Balrog. Yeah, exactly. That's a Baylor. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yes. No, I don't know what a Dretch is, though. Uh, six. Dang. Put you on roll again. You're right. <laughs> Just gonna be... Do you have pink yet? Nope. Huh. I purple. Two, two. Now you go. Now I'm about to get it. Now, before, um, before I read the actual question, I just want to read this one and see if you can get it. When a Baylor demon dies, what happens to its body? Uh, 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 doesn't explode. It, it, um, I think it just gets banished. Nope, it goes pop. It does explode. Yeah. Okay, so now your real question. Just because that was Baylor on Baylor action, so characters who become astral or ethereal in the Tomb of Horrors risk attracting what type of creature? Say it one more time. You read it. Which one is it? Pink? Mm -hmm. okay. Characters who become astral or ethereal in the Tomb of Horrors Risk attracting what type of creature? Okay, okay, okay. I'll, I'll help you a little bit. It's a type of infernal. So that brings it down to a 50 50 for you. Really? Yeah. Okay. Now we're just thinking. Um... Remember, there's only two types of infernal, so it brings it down to a 50 50 for you, my dude. Right. Um... It's that vague. Oh, God. Let's see, other one. Right. Uh, not a. Not saying my ink, but instead it's. Um... HB, um... No, no, no. You're thinking too specific. I'm getting too many winning right now. I want this to be over, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got... It's already actually one minute over. So we'll, we'll finish up with my question, I guess. We'll give everybody fed final rounds from him. I... Come on, man. With your gut. I, I, I honestly don't know. 
It's I a like, pass. And I'll the fact that it's too specific there already threw me off. I'll and Paul is the incubus. No, between devils and demons is a demon. Oh. oh, duh. No, no, I'm thinking something specific there, like... No, 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 I said keep it vague. There. Yeah. A green one, please. The category uh, In the Forgotten Realms, what is the minimum magic number of participants required to cast circle magic? Three. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Nice. I think those witch movies hacks. my wife my wife loves so much paid off. <clears throat> actually, that's where hacks come from. Is those <laughs> witch movies? He, you know what? He actually technically dropped a hint there. Um, I didn't even realize. So what I'll do is that was my question. We'll have no, no, no. We will keep going. All right. All right. You'll get a question. You'll get a question. Um, to 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 get this, and I have actually a final round of this time. Go, bro, Change go. my mind. Because we're doing a final. So we're final sounds fun. Purple. Yeah. In Dragonlance, the Knights of the Crown. The Knights of the Sword and the Knights of the Rose together comprise which order of knights? The Royal Guard. The Knights of Samura. Samura. Somura? Solmenia. Solmenia. Probably the city there. You're trying to add an accent to it, too. Solmenia? Alright. Um, Alright. You get one more. Read me off purple. Purple? The islands of Alaron Gwyneth. Moray, Rotham, belong to what cluster of islands west of Faerun Sword Coast? Again, you'll need another map for this one. Um, Actually, this one's from Magic the Gathering. Yeah? Yeah. The Sword Coast. The Sword Coast is from Magic the Gathering. Oh, right. I mean, still, you'd still need to go geography, oh, but yeah. yeah. Um, since I don't, the Samarillion. <laughs> Moonshe Isles. No, right, hold on. So I have an idea on how to do like the final final. What I was thinking, well, we can decide amongst each other. But I was thinking we all go to the middle. All of these come as a point. We also get a card, and then that's also one point for each. And then you can add it up. No, here's what I was thinking. So whoever has the most points, they get put in the center, right? Mm. One of us that doesn't have the most points rolls a d6. That's what color we have to read, and first one to answer that correctly wins. But with only people that are in the center. Yes. That's fine. Okay. Which. That puts it as Mike and Mike. Oh my gosh. Okay. Right. So you guys get to go into the green goop and the big mouth of being eaten. Uh, Excellent. Was, you can put it in the plate of water over there that I noticed. Um, <laughs> all right. The dice roll is number three. Which is monsters. Which two breath weapons can be used by brass dragons? The uh, buzzer there. Okay. Um, acid and, uh, and uh, fire. Fire and sleep. Unfortunately, you are incorrect. Oh. Next card. Okay, so we have our buzzers. Two. We have our hand like this. <laughs> Which early TSR employee like used that. the pseudonym of uh, used the pseudonym Omar Kolash with his uh, apparatus of Kolash? Pass. <laughs> Tim Cask. Four. During the War of Lands of Kryn, what magically elevated structures served the Dragon Army as mobile command bases and troop transport? Obelisks. Wrong. Airships. Wrong. Flying citadels. <laughs> <laughs> One. What does the talisman of the sphere allow you to control? Water. Wrong. Um. <laughs> spheres? Close. The sphere of annihilation. I'm not giving it to you. <laughs> talisman of spheres. <laughs> no, that's multiple spheres. That's a specific sphere. In the computer game Neverwinter Nights, who was the main antagonist and reptilian queen of the old ones? Uh, Tiamat? No. Tiamat? That dragon's a reptilian queen. Pass. Morag. Next question. Four. Uh, in the computer game Neverwinter Nights, who is the half-elf paladin of noble birth, a noble birth who initially recruited the main character? Legolas. Wrong. <laughs> Beautifully. <laughs> Wrong. Lady Arabeth. Five. In Critical Role, Vaxdelian Vessar, twin brother of Vaxelia, landed the killing blow on what creature that had killed their mother? Dragon? Correct! No. <laughs> <laughs> I had to remember that from the animated series. Uh, that was like what she had a special sense for. I, I made him sit down to watch it with me because. And I was like, that's what got you the victory here. I can't believe that's in it. 
That, that's an interesting of question. Of course, the, the winning answer had to be. I thought dragon. Critical role. I, I totally thought dragon. I'm like, that's too obvious. Dragon. <laughs> I'm like, okay, he's wrong. Right. Damn. <laughs> I'm just that I actually asked to put up a fight. I should defend my honor here. Mm-hmm. Mike rage quits against Mike. <sighs> I didn't rage. I'm sorry, I, I rage lost, and then rage I split the table. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys a- so much for playing D and D Open Edition Trivial Pursuit. I hope you guys had some fun. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Great. this was amazing. Uh, did you guys have fun? Was it more than what you expected? Less? The questions? How were they? The questions varied a lot. You had some that were relatively like simple. They they were still involved in the game, but they were simple. And then you had some that were. If you did not know, you did not know, period. There were a lot more that were esoteric, older, more than I expected. Older yeah. questions, mm-hmm. right? That took me off guard. Having all of the much older questions, I, I know nothing from those <clears throat> editions. So. I really know anything from those editions. And I actually read the books. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, we went through only one of each of these cards in a few at the bottom over there, and we still have all of these left. And there's five questions on each card, so you might... Six. Six, six questions. So you card. might think that we actually we went, went through, through probably about 35, 40 percent of these cards. Uh, uh, we went, yeah, maybe. And but what I'm saying is only one question yeah, out of the five, five though. So actually, no. The only way to show this is is pick up that entire deck and put it in my hand really quick. No, no, that's what's left over. Yeah. yeah. So there's a bit extra in there from the other little. Just so this is what we didn't do. This is what we did do. Yep. That's so, only one question of the five from each of these. As in of all those that we did use, we could still six. reuse on a different roll. So oh, yeah. lots of questions. But overall, fun experience? Oh, oh yeah, I had, I had a great time. Absolutely love this. Alright guys, Max, go ahead and try and take us out. We'll see if you can do it. Alright guys, thank you very much for joining us for this recorded video for the Dungeons and Dragons Trivial Pursuit game. We are doing our live streams on Sundays at 6.30 PST. Hit the like, subscribe button if you enjoyed the content and want to see us again more so we get notifications every week when we do go live. And <laughs> and as always, I can't even. Yes, you can. I can't even. Uh, think. All right. So What's the line out there? Right. Thanks for watching. We go, thanks for watching. And as always, I look forward to, and then you guys jump in and we say, see you guys next time in court. Okay. okay. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I look forward to... See you next time!